Agents of ICS is a Monster of the Week horror podcast meant for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Why, hello there, and welcome back to Agents of ICS, our Monster of the Week actual play. Let us join our agents back in the forest of Lovakaj. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Forest. I will keep trying to pronounce it different ways until I get it correct. One of them has to be right, and I'll just copy-paste that one into all the wrong ones. The magic of editing. Alrighty. So, we'll pick up exactly where we left off, which was... V3, plus one of you, finding the blood from Graham's friend, Finn. Uh, you know what? On, on that note, I'll put uh, his uh, little tip. Friend Finn, missing. In case we forget his name for a second, because he doesn't get a token. I mean, blood of the presumed friend, friend. Correct. <laughs> this is actually where Graham uh, hides his skills, and we're his next victim. Exactly. Margo turned around, only to see a second, a second Graham? Oh no. And then he smashes you guys, and you become a Graham cracker, and then you die. <laughs> That's a twist. Yeah, I know, right? He's actually just a, uh, he likes making human, uh, what are they called? Uh, s'mores? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Excellent. Carson, you can be the chocolate. Yeah, I can do that. I say Margo, but you want to eat the chocolate and I be the chocolate. So you can be the, uh, you can't be the cracker, unfortunately, Graham is. Sorry. <laughs> All right. You can be the peanut butter or the uh, marshmallow, and then you can eat Sorry, Carson as you're dying. I don't know. We need three ingredients. We've got three. Isn't it? Are we? I thought we were talking about s'mores. Oh, we are talking about s'mores. It's just I realized there's a third person. Do we have twice as much chocolate or twice as much Mush mushroom. Oh my god, what is a s'more? <laughs> we add mushrooms on yes. top of the, the graham cracker. Oh, that's so disgusting. <laughs> oh, that's so cursed. No. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. I mean, it's close enough. You're in the woods, you brought chocolate, graham crackers, but no marshmallows, so mushrooms. Yeah, I guess marshmallows oh, when you don't do that umami occur flavor. naturally in the <laughs> wild. Indeed, indeed. It's natural, therefore it's fine. You don't need the chocolate, use dirt. <laughs> you actually, uh, you accidentally get one of those hallucinogenic mushrooms. Accidentally? Oh. On purpose. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Best s'more ever, anyway. I didn't know we were, uh, fungi. They you produce uh, a small baggie. Connoisseurs. I say, you didn't know we were fun guys? That's yeah, the... full stop. There you go. I didn't realize. <laughs> you were there! At the cusp of victory! All right. Speaking of the cusp of victory, you're all looking at blood. Margo, you were sketching, uh, basically Graham describing the plant, correct? Yeah. All right, as you were sketching it, you heard a disturbance behind you, something moving amongst the brush, and you went to turn around. As you do, I was going to say, take a poll. What do you think you see? It really can the be If You see God and die. <laughs> no, no, the guy. The guy that's missing. Oh, yeah. Finn? Yeah. That's spoiler. my vote. Spoiler, Finn was actually God all along. Oh, no! Oh, God! You mean no Finn? Come on. Oh, Finn! <laughs> no, I don't oh, like that. I if God's real name was Finn, I would definitely not believe in him. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, mm, that just I just can't spend disbelief for that one. Yeah, that's the last straw. Sorry, bud. Anyway, you turned around, Margo, and you see a deer. It's a, it's, it's a fair, you know, 15, 20 feet from you guys, just kind of watching. Oh, dear. I'll, it's I'll chuckle for that. not too shy to get this close to people. It was seemingly eating. You guys moving around and you taking a few steps back, Margo. You must have disturbed something to alert it. You can tell from where it was standing, it was actually behind some bushes. You can really only see it from the neck up and parts of its body through some of the uh, leaves and such. Uh, you know how this trope usually goes, right? The deer like has bloody feet because he walked in blood. Is are, are his are, are his feet acceptable? Yes, the deer's human feet are covered in blood. I there's nothing about human feet in that anywhere. <laughs> no, in he fact, takes it's off his muscle. little hooves. I mean, a silly little thing. animal walked through a, a, a crime scene without realizing it, and that's the hint to find the crime scene. Indeed, unfortunately, this is not that, is that time. A common occurrence? Of course, it is. Is it? it? That happens all the time. Does it? Yes. I'm going to have to do some research on that. Go ahead. All right. So there's nothing weird about this deer. Not that you can see now. It is seemingly just watching you. It, it seems, you know, shocked. As per usual, as to seeing uh, people. You don't belong here. He takes off his hose and shows uh, his little man fingers. The, the joke is unappreciated, my dear. 
Because <laughs> I might not be joking. Good point. No, there are no man fingers. It is a regular deer. It is watching. Uh, where where is this located? It's about fifteen feet behind Margot. Okay. If I stand up, will it run away? Deer's pretty deers. Deer is a pl- is plural and singular. I believe so. Um, yes. Deer are uh incredibly flighty so if it doesn't run away i'd be surprised are you standing up quickly or slowly um quickly i want to scare it away then yes you very much do and you scare it away it quickly whips around and shoots off into the forest all right it was a normal deer i accept you mean it's not a not deer that is correct all right that was real uh anticlimactic uh thanks for that one gm <laughs> Anytime. Um, <laughs> you really ruined the experience. No, um, I will. Uh, I will I mean, go back to uh, end on the cliffhanger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, I've got the perfect solution. Like, make them think they were going to end there. the session on me opening a door, and suddenly there's something there, and it turns out to be like there is no toilet paper. <laughs> dun, or dun, dun. there is, and it's the wrong way. Oh, oh horror! Oh, that's awful. Now that is a, that is not a, disgusting, disgusting. I know. See, I, I'm hitting all my lists. If I say the wrong way, both people will be like, "Oh, gross!" Rather than saying a particular way, so I win regardless. Hell yeah. The uh, the reverse toilet paper. That's my uh, my veil. My hard no. <laughs> no, that, 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 that's a line then. <laughs> <laughs> no line. Sorry. Yeah, m- mentioning toilet paper the wrong way. That's my line. Sorry, bud. I- I'm out of this game. <laughs> sorry. I thought this was a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> on a date, literally the first question you ask, how do you hang your toilet paper? It's like, <laughs> let's really think about this one. It's important. Alrighty. All right. Margo, you see this thing jet off into the distance. Uh, Jane Carson, of course, you see Margo quickly stand and just like the ass end of an animal just shooting off into the woods. Well, that could have gone worse, I think. Uh, yeah. I guess I mean, at we... At least it wasn't a bear or something. I guess we still don't... guess we're... Just walking, just walking in the woods, just having some fun. Is my sketch done? Uh, by this point, yes. You kind of confused uh, Graham for a moment, and he like looked over your shoulder to see the animal leave and just kind of shrugged at that. And he continues describing said plant. You get a proximity of what it probably should look like. It is definitely incredibly strange. To quickly re-describe it, if you've seen like a rose, take off the rose. Uh, I'm not sure if you actually seen like a rose plant, but the spikes can be relatively long. These are anywhere ranging from like half an inch to two inches long. If you've seen plants or trees that have like the the very not white but kind of ivory looking bark, it's very similar to that, with like hints of red, especially at the tips of each little bramble, and they stick outwards specifically. They do not hook. He was very particular on that. Mm. Actually, sounds strangely familiar, but I can't place it. Yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah. Other than that, all you guys find here is blood. Can we take a sample? Oh yeah, most definitely. How, how do you want to store it? It's a good question. I guess I'm not some crime scene investigator. You, you have stuff on you. I, is it on the leaves? or? There's very little on the leaves, and if it would have been, it'd be on fallen leaves. So most of it, if not all of it, is found on the bark of the tree. Basically the roots. Can I cut away a piece of the root? Very much so, yes. The blood on it? Yeah, definitely. Alright, I'll do that then. Alright, blood sample procured. Uh, looking about, seems to be no more disturbances. You guys only hear far off animals and the swing of the leaves. Is it starting to feel spooky? Uh, I'd say at this point it's probably around midday. It depends if you feel un, you know, unnerved in the woods depending in general. On how, depending on how dense this woods is, it might be semi dark anyway. It is, yes. Hey, uh, what time of day did Finn trip over the this plant? I don't know if Graham said, but it was around nightfall. Is nightfall the correct term? Sunfall, whatever. <laughs> Sunfall sounds weird. Nightfall sounds so much cooler. I mean, dusk. Yeah. This could be a plant that prefers a certain time of day, so we could come back here around nightfall. Are you suggesting it's a moving plant? No, but it could be a growing plant. One that only shows up at certain times of the day. For, for all we know, it could be in the roots oh, you, mean in the like a bl- you mean like a blooming yeah, blooming. Like night flowers? Yeah. Oh, we could set up camp here, that's fine. Oh, we could set up camp. I mean, is there anywhere else we can look first and come back? The only... Try following the rest of his road, I guess. 
Yeah, the only particular location that Graham pointed out to you guys is this one. He didn't really bring up any, I mean, well, besides... Oh, oh, yeah, and he got hurt, and then they went, they headed back, right? Correct, they went right back for the town. So then, yeah, I guess we probably should camp out here. All right, plans is to chill here all night, then? Sounds good to, to me. Did we even bring camping equipment? Yes, of course we did. did. All right. That's part good of all the then. bullshit I ended up picking up and sorting out in the early mornings. Ah. Oh, convenient. Indeed. All right. Prepared as you all are, uh, we set up camp. And to be super clear, you guys left really early. You got here around midday, let's say around 12 or 1. And we're waiting about five plus hours, five, six hours. Are you guys doing anything in particular? Because this is going to be definitely some time. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely be like looking through the rest of the area. Maybe if there's the, maybe the, plane, the plant actually moved oh. or it was removed by something. In my backpack, I take out the materials for s'more. For what? For s'more. Some graham crackers and okay. marshmallow and chocolate and of course the, the mushrooms. Of yeah. course. Um, I want to text the picture of the plant I drew to the research guys. <laughs> are, you, are you just having a list of everything that you're sending out? Pretty much, yeah. So eventually when you... <laughs> reach somewhere that's not here they just rapid fire off like 90 texts yeah all right cool I i'm just gonna assume you're basically sending every everything uh, and then for reference margo you don't have to do this as you're aware plenty of people do not if you wish to check in with ics give them like a daily check-in obviously today is not really going to work very well but you would have to drive outside of town about an hour or so to do so if you want just let me know if you want to keep in contact with them oh totally uh, what do you mean daily check-in Basically say, hey guys, you know, I found this, that, and the other, blah, 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 blah. You know that if you drive out about an hour or two, you'll have reception again. Oh, well, I mean, that'll probably be part of my, hey, I need research into this kind of thing. Right. And like I said, they're not expecting you to, so it's okay not to. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Alrighty, and on that note, uh, we have Carson preparing s'mores. Wow, man, I got brain rot so bad. I want to say mushroom. I really want to say mushroom. Oh, all right. Brain rot. Stop. I could get frame. I frame. I could get fried mushrooms. Yeah. Bring out a little pan. I just don't know if mushroom and chocolate goes together in any way at all. But well, well they could it. be separate. Yeah. Then it's not a s'more. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. uh, wait. Actually, isn't that what truffles are? Yeah. Technically. Yeah. Fancy. I fancy mean, ass boys. If you want to go find truffles in a forest. Well, do I don't. <laughs> do you have a pig? No. We do in City of Mist. Is Do it a we? truffle pig then? Uh, we'll have to find out. You have to train it, train bacon to find truffles. I mean, I think it has to be like born specifically with the notion of finding truffles. <laughs> born with the truffle finding trait. Yeah, it, it literally is like a, a mutation or something. So uh, interesting. Okay, did not know that. Yeah, and if they ever eat the truffles, they grow crazy, so you have to kill them. Oh my! What? They, they literally get addicted for life to itself. What the shit? Okay, that turned dark really quick. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah. Poor pigs, man. All right, well, someone, someone go pet a pig for me. I don't, I don't have immediate access to one. I can pet a goat. Anyway, so, Carson, preparing food. Jay, looking around the general area. Margo, what are you doing? I think I'm joining Jay. All right. As the two of you are kind of moving about, you know. Comedic entertainment. Checking things out. We'll say Graham stays behind. Carson, to kind of help you set up camp, you know, get food and things ready. Just, just kind of counting stuff to make sure we have everything we need. He trusts you guys. He's just double, double checking. And obviously hours are going to pass. So both Jay and Margo, you guys are being very particular. As Jay mentioned, these woods are indeed quite thick. Uh, there are times where you can look forward and you can't see more than 20 feet in that direction. Just because the general density of each tree is just absurd. You guys find a nice, you know, general camping area. And they, they, they let you guys know, you're more than welcome to camp. Just don't really harm, you know, the wildlife, bushes, trees, things of that nature, blah, blah, blah. But there are places that look like they're almost made for camping, but not really. You guys are really rough and tumbling it. Fortunately, you brought enough materials with you. During this time, while Jay and Margo are out, uh, is anyone talking about anything in particular? You guys, you guys uh, keeping up conversation or just focusing on the job? Focusing on these s'mores. Talking shop. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I'll probably be talking shop, but I'm not sure about what. Okay, fair yeah. enough. There's definitely like, a conversation like happening. Like plans to just don't just up and leave. It has to be somewhere. Indeed. Yeah. And as you're having this conversation, 
Uh, Margo and Jay, you guys are kind of fine looking out and, like I said, being very thorough. Uh, but Carson, you're kind of having a chit chat with uh, Mr. Graham here, and he's helping you sort the crackers and other things like that, and just making sure we got enough of this, that, and the other. And you guys are just shooting shit, talking shop, you know, the usual. He's kind of giving you some some background information, maybe double checking things to like, okay, did I remember this right? And as you're speaking with him, you see just over his shoulder, between two trees, there's maybe three or four inches of space between them, Carson. And you swear you see a deer just staring at you. It's staring at me. I get a weird vibe. It's staring directly at you. It's right over Graham's shoulder. I, how far away is this? Maybe 15 feet. Where, where are, uh, where are Mario and Jay? They're out currently looking either for the plant or for other clues. It's just you and Graham and, right now. Hey, Graham? He kind of pauses and goes, yeah? Could you do me a favor? He puts out whatever he's working on. Yeah, sure. What's up? Could you just very slowly turn around and see if we're looking at the same thing? He's sitting a slightly different angle than you are, but he does indeed turn around. And he's looking off into the woods and just sees nothing. And just nothing? Turns, Is it gone? No, he just turns, but no, he, it's, you can still see it. You can still very clearly see it. it it's like explicitly between these two trees. But he's standing kind of off kilter from you, so he can't see between them exactly. But it's still staring at me? Directly at you now. Oh, that's really weird. All right, Graham, I'm going to need you to get behind me. As Graham is moving and positioning to get behind you, Carson, you see the eyes sidestep at a perfect 90 degree angle away to the right. And suddenly it's gone as Graham positions and kind of looks and begins squinting and kind of like, uh... What am I looking for exactly? Something weird going on. Where? It isn't it's gone now, but there was something watching us. Another animal or like a person? You know, I'm not sure I can answer that question. Huh. You can roll for it technically, though. <laughs> can I read a bad situation? <laughs> Is it now that it's gone, though? I would say you don't need to. Okay. O only so because I that sense of your being watched is just completely gone. It's just gone? Completely gone. All right, Graham. We're going to sit down. Okay. We're going to eat our s'mores. Pop to squat and just, all right. Are we waiting for uh, Jay and Margaret to go back or? Yep. Are they still out there? Uh, they are. And after some time, I would say maybe 30, 40 minutes after that little episode, uh, Margaret and Jay are, are able to come back as it's getting a bit darker and, you know, harder to say. Who comes back first? I mean, assuming we went together probably at the same time, right? Probably. Like if we both do like different sides or something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we would have um, agreed on a certain distance to look around. Yeah. I'm going to go over to Margo. Within shouting distance. Uh, well, how far is shouting distance? How do we measure that? I mean, a dense force like this. Pretty far, but at the same time. All right, I'm going to go over to Margo. And Jay, I guess, since you guys came back. And I'm going to be like, so Margo, did you get any weird vibes from that deer earlier? I mean, me as a player, yes. God, would would that be odd to see a deer just there? Not at that distance, though. Well, no, no I, it's some, that happens a lot. I mean, like, more was it staring, <laughs> but like, weirdly staring? Yeah, okay, that's a fair or question. What, was it deer in headlights staring, or was it staring like, I see you? It looked scared. It looked like you startled it. It was eating. And you taking a step back got within its like, you know, radius of I can hear you. So it stood up and it was just like, oh, shit. All right. So Margo's going to say no. All right. Um, I don't think it's the same deer. But while you two were gone, I was uh, stared at incredibly intensely for a pretty solid period of time. And then all of a sudden it moved in a unnatural way and then disappeared do we did have it, any thoughts on this did it make any sounds like you know when the other deer ran away zero sounds that i'm aware of right you heard a light rustling of the bush barely there rustling and when you say it went 90 degrees so probably now that you're thinking back on the situation carson it's even stranger you saw it between two trees 
when How it moved, were the trees? They were relatively thick, but they weren't thick enough that were it to move to the left or the right like it did. You would have seen its body going that direction, or Graham should have seen the side of it at least. That's, I'm just saying, y'all, I think we're being watched by a creature. What area of the world is this in? Uh, basically, <laughs> what's that general, like, not Virginia, that whole area called, like, Appalachian? Appalachia? Yeah, Appalachia, effectively. Is, so is it, like, a not deer? Is that, is that a name of something? Yeah, it's one of the, like, uh, Appalachian, like, folktales. Is it literally called They're a like, not deer? It's literally called a not deer. What? I've never heard that one. I've actually, really? heard, I've actually not heard of that one either, no. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, that's a nice picture, actually, if you Google it. It's pretty bizarre. Is this just an unfortunate, <laughs> an unfortunate uh, similarity? Well, I can't answer that, but. Oh. Well, it's definitely yeah, it, a real it could, thing. It could have been intentional. Well, I mean, is it a real thing? Who knows? But it's definitely one of the things that show up a lot in like Appalachian ghost stories and stuff. No, yes. Yeah, so you were saying we're being haunted by either a not there or a Wendigo. Yeah. Oh, you're not supposed to say that. You can't say it you out loud. You don't actually believe, right? That okay, but, but look. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I've seen plenty of weird stuff. I take it back. We are in a pretty what? weird job. Like, weird stuff's going to happen. You're not supposed to say the word out loud. It draws them to you. Right, fine, we'll call it a skinwalker then. Well, I, okay, I don't know if that's any better, but that's fine. All right, fine, we'll call it a naglushi then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just make <laughs> One of the terms will work. Look, Carson's just freaked out. He's I don't know. Like, oh what do you want God. to call it? A Bigfoot? Yeah, a Bigfoot's Sasquatch? not bad. <laughs> we'll call it we'll call it a weird thing in the woods. Either way, um, something real weird is out here with us. I don't know if it's watching you, but it was definitely watching me. And Graham did not see it at all. Which I find bizarre. Um, God. Yes. I think I would know how to track footsteps, so while I was out. I would have looked to the ground to see what sort of animals are in the area. Are there lots of deer prints or other numerous, like excessively numerous footprints? Are there are there weird little handprints from a weird little deer that takes off its hooves? Oh, no, boy. Look. Honestly, that might slow, low key be the most terrifying option. <laughs> go, I'm a little stressed. Go ahead and roll me investigate. We find like a, a manhole cover in the middle of the forest. You mean me, right? A deer. It's actually just a bug out shelter for, that somebody made. <laughs> yes, Margo. Nice. Alrighty, an 11. So basically you can ask me uh, two generic questions or one really solid question. Uh, do you want to know generally like what you found? Yeah, I want a general. Sure. You found enough animal prints that logically makes sense. Rabbits. A wolf or I don't know if there's coyotes out in the Appalachia, but we'll say, you know, wolves, foxes, things that there nature. There are many co coyotes are really common. Oh, they are? Okay, cool. I know there's yeah. tons in Arizona, so yeah, lots of coyotes. Yeah, we have a lot around here. Okay, cool. Good enough. Basically, all the prints you find, Margo, makes sense. There were one or two times, though, where you would see prints go towards something more solid, such as stone, a downed tree, like a large log. And of course, the footprints would cease. But there is no mud on the new surface. So you know if an animal goes from mud, at least the first footprint or two should leave a tiny amount of dirt behind. So there are a few times where you saw tracks just stop. I will mention this. I actually, I wish to mention this with Graham not in your shot. All right, so what does that entail exactly? And there are also other instances where the footprints maybe stopped a good, like, five, ten feet prior to said structure. So either the animal leapt onto it or it jumped up, and who knows. But the footprint's just dead stop. That's... This is weird. Oh, I don't like it. Is that my one general or is that two general? If you have an extra question, go for it. Um, I would have also took the plants for maybe another sign of that weird-ass one. You did not find any signs of the other plant. But this plant was growing from the ground, right, Graham? I mean, it was coming up from the ground, yeah. Not that it was, I don't know, hanging from a tree or something? No, no, definitely Even not. It was... Oh, no, no, no. It, it was, I mean, 
He's he's now thinking like scratching at his head. Shit. I mean, it was on the ground facing up, like most plants. Yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense. Might as well check the tree, I guess, but just to be sure. And definitely, while the two of you were out, Margot and Jay. Uh, while Graham was not helping you, Carson, he was looking at the tree in the general area, and he, he didn't find anything else besides the blood, of course. Um, oh, still. Is it still an entirely different there. question to ask if those disappearing footprints belong to one animal? I can answer that. We'll say one of them belonged to like a small fox and one belonged to a deer. Okay. And they both had the disappearing thing. Correct. Aside from waiting here, it seems kind of a waste to not do anything, so I might have a well, I can try something, I guess. Such as? Asking my friend. Oh, sure. Not sure if he knows anything about this part of town, but he seems to have a weird knowledge of places and things, so might as well. All right, do you uh, normally move away into a private area for this, or would you do it in front of everybody? Like, I would definitely not do it in front of Graham. Okay. Normally I do it away from people, but at this point I think that, honestly, I've, well... They are from the Bureau, they have seen weird stuff, they might as well see it. It doesn't matter too much. Because normally, when I ask it questions, they can't see the result anyway. But I'm going to do it slightly different this time around. Because we're in the middle of the woods and there isn't really any paper for it to tell me where to go, basically. Uh, so I'll take out my pocket watch, and I'll take out the map. And I'll do the, um, do you know, like the pendulum dowsing thing? Yeah. I'll basically do that and ask it if there's anything we missed. Anything like a location, basically. Sure. I will say, though, he doesn't tend to answer when I specifically ask a question. So, no hopes. Okay. I need to roll a weird for disbelief. Yep. <laughs> Which is a minus one, so... Uh... Good luck. That's a mixed success. A nine! You must have rolled really well. A six and a four, <laughs> nice! Mm. Already. So on a mixed success, uh, he has little experience with this. You can ask one of the questions below. I think in this case, because we're in the middle of the forest, I think it's like a hidden secret nearby. Like anything we missed, we looked over. Sure. If that works. As you sort of dangle the pocket watch over the map, due to gravity, of course, it begins to spin in place. But it continues spinning and swaying. And as it does, like stirring a bowl of soup, you begin to see the words wave around on the map. They begin to flow, breaking up words and forming new phrases. Initially, it's just chicken scratch, almost impossible to discern. And you feel a, both like a chill and almost like a like lightning in a way, like a zap, kind of flow up your arm. And as that happens, the words begin to solidify and flow into place. They're not perfectly straight. They're almost vibrating. But you can see deeper into the woods. I would say probably near... Yeah, you guys had a pretty high view from where you guys were staying. It's closer to like the mountainous area. It just says the word here. And it's, it's definitely, definitely deeper into Lavakaj. It looks to be pointing out one of the one of the caves, but the here is floating and it starts to move down and away from that cave. And it stops somewhere, seemingly in the middle of nowhere. And then the other lines, like part of like the walk path, none of these are present in the actual woods on the map. But those lines begin to dance between this dead zone to one of the listed caves as if it's trying to draw your attention to this area. As that happens, the, the Jay and Margo basically see, or Jay and Margo, Carson and Margo basically see me like twisting my head, trying to read, looking very close, and they see absolutely nothing. And I just start mouthing like the things I see, like there's something here, it's moving. A cave, it's cold. There's, I don't know, a weird staticky feeling. It's high up, I think. In... The staticiness is uh, from the being itself, oh, okay. Kind of reaching out to you, so you, you know you know that. But the the cold is yeah, the, 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 that's it's trying to give you like the feeling of the cave. Yeah, there is. Uh, I'll try to like uh, angle myself towards looking towards the way I need to go for the cave, basically somewhere over there. 
than a cave. I think it's a cave. So looking between like that area and the map, seeing how far away it is. Do you have a pen to mark the map? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm pointing at the map basically at this point. Where the cave oh, is. Okay. And also... are, are we right beside you? Yeah. Okay, so I I'll... I'll you to a side. Um, make a mental note of that, and then we'll we'll go check that out tomorrow after we camp here tonight. Yeah, and I'll also point to like the, the here, which was moving. I say, and there's something moving here. What's I think the right? Does we know what direction it's going? It's going away from the cave. Away from the cave, and how is well, that away from us as well? It's deeper into the forest. Yes. Okay. Is your is your friend real time or uh, let, let, think... let, like is this creature moving now? I think in this instance, yes, it is. Ooh, okay. How much time do we have until sundown? I mean, now, basically. It's about five, six. Also, and is it is it heading towards us, away from us, uh, horizontal from us? So in terms of movement, everything stopped after my description. So effectively, when everything moved into place, you're not sure if this entity was tracking whatever is in the woods, or if it was just moving things around to show you there's also a cave here. In this unmarked zone. No, okay. Oh, so wait, the, the here wasn't moving to like, um, like something was moving. It was more of a... More of an arrow? This... Yes, more of an arrow. Yeah. More, more of saying, no, okay. yeah, more of a, it pointed to the no, cave okay. and then moved and said, there's also one here. In that case, I'll point out both caves, I guess. There's something in here in just general direction. All right, then, yeah, we'll go to that out later. Um, I'm curious if Graham knows anything about these caves. Maybe. Let's go ask. I don't think they said anything about going into caves, though, but... No, but they might know the area. Yeah, I mean, if, how often do we think they hike? Drug. Did did they say? I don't remember. God. Graham mentioned he went often enough for it to be, you know, reasonable. So he should theoretically, theoretically know whether or not yeah. there are caves in the area. Yeah. Okay. Well, 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 the two of them are deliberating, I'm asking my pocket watch if it wants anything in return for that or for good. <laughs> Quietly. You get a thrumming that'll effectively let you know. I'll let you know. Right, as usual, then. Alright, well, I guess we'll go over to Graham. Alright, he's, he's still kind of fiddling with things. He's putting some of the, uh, the food away and whatnot for tomorrow. Nice. Well, I ask him, does he know anything about any caves in the area? Yeah, I mean, there's a few. We went to, uh, you also got that map on you? Mm, yep. Yeah. yeah uh, I have the, ma the map with ha which has the case marks already. <laughs> oh, it goes, oh, yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, this one right here, the one you got marked. That one, we didn't go in it. Caving can be pretty dangerous. So we kind of, you know, we dipped our toes in, looked around a bit. But you, you skirted? We went around, around the, it? Around the entrance, yeah. I mean, I don't know how much y'all know about caves, but like, Definitely yeah. need it. Yeah, I'm sure y'all have heard the horror stories and whatnot, but it's definitely good to get with locals because even if some caves look inviting, it's nature. That shit can eat you yeah. up in a second. So we hit the entrance, looked around a bit, a little spooky, headed out somewhere else. I think there's another cave around you though, with that one. Much, much smaller. Uh, the others I didn't mess with. And he kind of points to the one you have marked and he goes, Yeah, I, I don't know if we went down that way, but I don't, I didn't see a cave there personally, but you know. Is what it is. At least one of the ones that are marked you've been to. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, in general, I'm not, I'm not a I'm not looking for unmarked caves. I don't want to find a bear or something. Yeah, I mean that could be pretty dangerous. Yeah. Wait, did you go there with Finn or with someone else? Yeah, no, yeah, with Finn. Yeah. Was this on the same trip or a different trip? Same trip. Yeah. The first day we we headed out. On the way back, he got cut, and we'll you know kind of pieced out after that. He wasn't feeling so good. So uh, did you go to the cave before or after he got cut? Uh, before. Okay. It's pretty boring, being entirely honest. Like I said, we didn't go in it, but... Yeah. Rocks, dirt, seen it before. Eh. Yeah, but they're so majestic. They are, but, you know, when there's not a tour guide, I don't want to fall in, like, a sinkhole and, you know, become part that of the is, cave. That is reasonable. That's definitely reasonable. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well. I think, um... I think... We're going there tomorrow. Yes, but I also think that we should keep an eye out tonight. Definitely. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, I did not bring any surveillance material, but I guess someone will have to stand watch. Yeah. Stand watch? Uh, like one at a time? Or... I touch my nose. Yeah. I mean, it's better for <laughs> if we do yeah. it anyway. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll volunteer first. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> 
So we like sleeping in the shifts or what? Uh, Graham, I think you can just go to sleep. Oh, no, no. I'll hop out. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the team. I brought you guys All right. here. All right. Margo first. Who next? I'll take second. That's fine. All right. I'll take last shift then. All right. I'll take third. Dope. All right. And with that, everything's already set up. So you guys chat a bit more. Uh, you probably have a more fulfilling meal than, you know, chocolate and marshmallows. There we go. Said it. Got it. I win. <laughs> s'mores. I can just say s'mores. Uh, yeah. I would have brought some food other than the s'mores. Yeah. And <laughs> Jay brought a singular can of beans. Hell yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, Graham brought exactly one and a half protein bars. The half one isn't cut in half. He just got bored eating halfway through. Yeah. <laughs> and that's going to be annoying to split. Yeah. Well, fortunately, those beans are probably yours. I don't see Margo eating them. Yeah, no thanks. I imagine your hatred of beans uh, transcends all characters. All characters. Fair enough. <laughs> no, he would have brought some, like, basic ass rations, at least. Excellent. Same as my hatred of monkeys, all characters. Fair enough. So there's a monkey in his wood, you're saying? He's dead. Like, already dead. <laughs> uh, already dead. <laughs> then the next person wakes up, uh, Graham wakes up, takes over the shift, and Margo's just, like, holding a dead monkey. Uh, by the way, I will um, be staying Margo. up through uh, Graham's shift, just because oh, same. he's cute, and I don't trust him. Oh, just you? because he, he he's not familiar with the weird. And Jay was actually going to do the same thing. <laughs> so it's like a period where me and Margo are both awake and we indulge each other. Like. <laughs> Carson is just sleeping peacefully. Um, <laughs> um, also, I'm going to find a tree that's sturdy enough to climb and watch from up there. Sure. Do you want a hammock? I brought hammocks. No, that's fine. I love that, that, That's hammocks. a little too relaxed. I, 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 Carson gets a hammock. <laughs> Perfect. Look, if it attacks me while I'm in the hammock, you know, it's, I'm just gonna die, and that's fine. But you'll die relaxed. I will die relaxed, and there's nothing more I can ask of myself. Yeah, that's not how the twins are going. They're going down fighting. Who's the twins? Margo and Maverick. Oh, that's a, wait. Oh, that's right. The triplets now. The triplets. <laughs> Uh, Almost. Margo, Maverick, and M Magellan. No. Why not? V v vetoed. The, the triplet breaks the, uh, the naming convention. Uh, 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 yes, Margo, Maverick, is... and Rob. <laughs> <laughs> and Billy. <laughs> Alrighty, back to our sleeping schedules and shifts and such while you guys are watching. It does indeed get ridiculously dark. Fortunately, you guys do have some lighting. I assume you guys would use just like traditional lights, not fire. No, uh, definitely a fire. No, we, 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 what? we need s'mores real. We need real for those s'mores. It, not yeah. what? Are you going to be eating s'mores the entire night? Yeah, that I might. is not. That is not nutritionally appropriate, Margo. And I will not. I will be putting those away. Look, fire is good against some weird things, okay? Yeah, and we could also burn down the forest. That's why it's carefully no, no. controlled. She okay, had like proper, Smokey Bear. Well, I say proper, but he never had like wildlife training. He was a city scout, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will say if you guys do set up a fire, it is appropriately distanced from dry brush and such. No, and I, de I definitely know how to set one up. You know what, Mario? I don't give a shit. <laughs> Too bad. I oh. put away all the s'mores. Wow. Luckily, I'm I also kidding, brought one fine. of those, I like, give her hot plates. Anyway. I'm but... a pushover, and that's fine. I so... give her <laughs> the s'mores. Sorry, did you say hot plates? Yeah. What is that? Basically, one of those like metal pen things with like a enclosed space where you can safely store a fire. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, very cool. You just have that on you at all times, Jay? No, just for camping. Okay, <laughs> my bad. I mean, you don't need to forget that Jay is a crook. <laughs> uh, that's true. Yeah, literally is convicted for multiple crimes. Car Carson only uh... forgets because Carson's only kind of a crook. You're full on crook. Yeah, I'm like a uh, crook for convenience. Yeah, crook adjacent. Yeah, <laughs> I'm crook adjacent. Um, I have officially uh, gone straight, as the 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 people do. Um, 
I mean, as long as I'm not hanging out with a convicted murderer, I think we're good. Oh no, never murder. Okay. At least not in that. Well, 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 just stop swing. that sentence. Don't even sweat, finish sweat, it. Sweat. I'm, I'm smiling with that joke, but okay. <laughs> no, don't worry. I never killed anyone. Okay. Uh, somehow I'm a little suspicious. But do, go do, on. do accidents count? Manslaughter? No. It's I, actually I sure Margot, Maverick, and manslaughter. No, no, I liked Millie. Millie was cute. No, no, actually, like genuinely, do not name anybody Millie. Why not? There is somebody that I really hate named Millie, and I oh, can't that's take fair. He I was just get dirty. reminded of Millie Manastorm. I just think of Millie from uh, oh shit, what's it called? Hell of a boss, Bamp. Hell of a boss. Yeah, the animation. You know, you know, babe, Millie, the Amp girl. It is is her name Millie? Oh, yeah, yeah, Millie. Oh, oh I, I guess, guess it is. Isn't yeah, it? yeah so he has a, he has a whole song for her. A bad name association, but maybe you can change it for. Oh, that's, that's perfectly fair. Wife who has a name she hates as well. So, I have a couple names. Oh, Ashley and Brittany. You know what? Those are all. You know what Ashley and Brittany are? They're bitch their names. names. Their names for girl bullies who turn into nurses when they grow <laughs> up. <laughs> I was not expecting that last. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, that's so accurate. Sorry. Now I'm now I'm very curious. <laughs> oh man! I mean, am I wrong? I'm not because I know it. Also, I uh, I have a third one. I said Ashley and Brittany, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. There's Tiffany too. Tiffany's a bitch name, definitely. One hundred percent, still in that category. Yeah. How are you forgetting about Becky? You know, I don't really know any Becky. We don't know any Beckys here. I'm glad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Becky epidemic where you live. <laughs> like, oh, it's Luckily, a little localized. it's not a Dutch name, so we don't have them, but that's <laughs> the, the one Becky, it's like, ugh. <laughs> How did Everybody's you get like, here? God, Becky, and she just keeps showing up. Who invited her? Anyway, <laughs> Becky's and other bitchy names aside. Oh, what if the woos are filled with Beckys? <laughs> That's, Suddenly, that, that's the secret. That's the one monster we're fighting. It's, it's just some girl named Becky. A horde of Beckys her, comes over her, the hill. Uh, clone Jutsu. How do you react, Margo? <laughs> There's Beckys everywhere. Um, we're going time to, have to apologize to a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, yes. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to anybody who might be listening. You should change your name. Wow. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Sorry, your no. name to that. <laughs> <laughs> Not my fault you have a trash name. Oh my god. Legacy. <laughs> what <laughs> am I doing? <laughs> horrible legacy? Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus, that sounds so intense. <laughs> I love it. Uh, but uh, disclaimer, you know, obviously it's all based on personal <laughs> yes, experience. Yes. Apologies to anybody We're very who sorry might have that your name. You. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they planned ahead. They're like, oh god. <laughs> They're like, oh god, how could I know? How could I have known? All right, moving on. All right, moving on. Woods, <laughs> dark, relatively spooky. Margo is watching. Any, any creepy deer? Uh, no. So we're gonna quickly speed move over this. During the night, effectively, nothing happens. No animals come to you. You, of course, hear some things moving out it's in the woods and not such. Suspiciously quiet. No, not suspiciously quiet. You hear an appropriate amount of animals. Uh, when when Graham does wake and takes over, quote unquote, for Margo, and you're just like watching him, he's not easily spooked, really. So he's kind of just watching. Uh, he's tinkering with whatever's on his phone. You know, it does still work. He's just not getting any reception. So he's probably reading something or whatever while he's waiting and occasionally looking up into the distance. He kind of gets up and paces, maybe does some like squats, and, like jumping jacks to kind of keep himself awake. And he's like shadow boxing and whatnot. And he kind of looks around, checks the tree again to see if anything's growing or moving. Absolutely nothing. And as we go down the list, checking between. Uh, each of you, essentially, like I said, nothing. It is a relatively quiet night. I guess we have to go to the, the caverns today or caves today. And, and no the, weird plants popped up at all. Yeah, the plants never showed. Not that you saw, no. All right. I mean, we crossed it off the list, so it wasn't a waste of time. And with that, morning rolls around. Uh, I would say you basically all got good sleep ish. Uh, Margaret, you effectively did. Two shifts and then went to bed. Jay's is probably the most awkward because you're the last shift and still watching after Graham. I want to say that Jay basically went to bed early-ish. Yeah, that makes sense. Because he saw this coming. I, yeah. I, I also feel like uh, you and I would have a nonverbal understanding, so I probably would have woke you up when I went to bed. No. 
like I saw you awake, waking up with Graham and taking over, and I would like, okay, I'll sleep for two more hours, I guess. Wake me up when it's time. Not. Okay. Not audibly say nod. Yes. <laughs> Margo audibly approves. Audibly say nod, but don't move your head. Correct. Wink. Whistle. <laughs> Whistle. <laughs> as monotone as possible. Blinks audibly. So, it is now in the morning. You all got a relatively good sleep. Uh, fortunately, Carson didn't allow you guys to eat s'mores all night, so no one wakes up with uh, stomach problems. Good call there. I think we have a be the bigger issue, honestly. <laughs> if I have sweets too late, I have the longest dreams, and I wake up an hour later. I hate it. It is the worst. I have, like, not, not nightmares, but just really absurdly vivid. I swear they're real dreams. I wake and go, wow, oh, what nice. a great rest. And it's freaking, I went to bed at like 12 and it's one. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, the, the more sugar I eat, the weirder they get as well. Oh, God, I oh, hate it. I wonder if this is a phenomenon I didn't know about. You're not supposed to have sweets at night, so that's probably why. Yeah, your brain goes wild. Yeah. Oh, God. Shit sucks. Because I'm, I'm awake. I'm like, oh, it's like 1.30. I'm good to go. And it's 1.30. Damn it, should be like, if it was like five or six, I might consider staying up, but no. Sucks. Anyway. <laughs> I hate it. So, it is morning. We're not having that weird phenomena, fortunately, with all of you. And, if you wish, you may indeed venture towards the cave. If you guys wake up early, you should you should get there at a relatively uh, decent time. Obviously, we're trekking through woods, so it'll be slow, so we don't hurt ourselves or, you know, leave anything behind. We got a lot we're carrying, but we'll get there by midday, easily. You would definitely right. wake up to a sturdy forest breakfast with lots of egg basically mm. sign me up i hear egg, Love egg it. and bacon oh boy maybe maybe yeah. a sausage and a little bread oh okay. wow exciting jay is, jay is providing seriously <laughs> he's also a morning person he has to be do something disgusting i am not a morning person Dane. carson is tired he's a when light he sleeper up. and he wakes up at like 6 a.m Oh my god. Like, automatically? Carson has something. ten alarms three minutes apart. Sure, I'll rename Jay to uh, Daniel. Yeah, for real, god. <laughs> I love breakfast, I, I I have to wake up, Brain says, hey bud, get up! And I'm like, alright, alright. Meanwhile, there's me, I wake so up okay? in the afternoon and I haven't eaten breakfast in ten years. <laughs> Excellent, wow, you're so good at roleplaying. <laughs> 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 Alrighty, so, yes, we're up, we're eating, uh, Graham's super excited, he wasn't expecting you guys to be this prepared, so he is just munching in he's getting ready to go to this mysterious cave you know i think this is very cute of graham i love that he's excited to be here we're investigating what could potentially be a murder but you know i mean he wants to find his friend he's yeah well you well, know i would consider that to be kind of somber then we're here for a good no, time it, though. He, he's happy because we're listening you know that's fair you're right all right and i assume you guys uh actually yeah where do you where do you guys head to first the one I think we should go to the cave, cave that Graham and Finn went to. Alrighty. Uh we do know they are judging by the map. I say about say an hour or so apart. Okay. But we can very much do that. They're not that's not too bad. After trekking through the forest, you know, once again, more animals, nothing weird. We do indeed arrive at the cave. It seems there is somewhat of a clearing. Uh, in fact, you can actually tell this is probably man-made. You don't, you know there's probably, you didn't see any at least. A uh, tourist forest head cave, but it looks like they cleared part of the way in case people are interested. Uh, Graham just wanted to stay away from it because he didn't bring any cave equipment. Therefore, dangerous. But uh, it looks about as inviting as a cave could look. I mean, in it like looks a dangerous. a big cave or one of those caves that you have to low-key crawl into? Oh no, it's, it's, it's full on open. L large opening, definitely. And how far did Graham... And Finn go in. It wasn't very far. They just literally the entrance. the entrance. Literally the is entrance. Is there anything that is left that we can see? Do we get a? Can, does a, do we get any vibes? Are we going in? I mean, yeah, I'm going to go in a little link. bit. I would first check out the entrance itself, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Any tracks or checking for tracks? We find Marks some of any kind of uh, population going there. Yeah, fox, some rabbit. But that's about it. Nothing large. And heading on in, of course, we definitely need some lighting here. It seems spacious. You don't believe anything is living here. There are some bats and such that are, you know, clung to the roof, the ceiling. Slagmites, slagtites, all that useful good stuff that just forms naturally in nature. About 30 seconds after entering a said cave, we kind of see all this. And Graham lets you guys know that this is as far as he went. He, he kind of stopped here. So the cave continues in. You don't see anything inherently dangerous. There's no instant slope. 
There's no falls. But you do see some walkways that you probably need to squeeze through. And he points those out and saying, I didn't want to go there for obvious reasons. That shit looks freaky and I have to leave my backpack behind. So no thanks. Give a freaky vibe? Or is it just freaky naturally? Freaky naturally. I mean, have you heard the story of the dude that like got caught in a cave for like a month or something? He was like a professional. Dude like fell. No. Yeah, I heard about him. Uh, no, but did you hear about that guy who got stuck for 18 hours? Yeah, that too. So uh, I think someone do you guys stuck for I don't know how long it was. It was a while. It was more than a week. And they just kind of like uh, fed food down in there and they knew he was in there and they couldn't get him out. He ended up, uh, you know. What? Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't want to be that guy. I'm not a professional. He was. Well, you say professional. He was still um, a self-made professional. Yeah, it was a long. It was a long time. He ago. was doing it alone, which was not so. right. Exactly. And yeah, I had a bud with me, but come on. If I tell him, hey, get me out of here, then yeah. he falls too. We're both dead. No thanks. Well, luckily we're with four people now. So if two of us go in. True. And uh, normally I'd follow y'all, but I'm going to stay back here for this one. Sorry. Not a fan of caves. Luckily, luckily I'm used to it. Should somebody squeeze. stay with him just in case? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to stay, Carson? I Do you want to go into the creepy cave with me? I, I, I volunteer, Carson. Oh, I kind of wanted to go into the creepy cave. <laughs> All right, I'll wait. Did we go here? All right, <laughs> I'll wait. Um, but I mean, if anything happens, just holler real loud. All At right. At least Margot knows how to handle a big gun. Stuck yeah, in in indeed. Yes. As as always, I'm just a guy, just a dude. Just a dude. So With how this... about you tie this rope around you, Mister Dude, and I give him a rope. Okay. Oh, that's a good idea. I tie it around me. At least if you fall, you won't fall alone. Perfect. Uh, who, is it me going in first? Uh, well, I got one bad eye, so it's probably best if you go first. Oh, I was gonna do rock paper scissors, but that's fine. We can do that. Hey, sure. Just like that. All right. I get. I start heading in. I guess. And as mentioned, it's a relatively tight fit, so we need to leave our backpacks and such behind. You're able to turn sideways and essentially just kind of shimmy on through what seems to be a crack in a wall. It only lasts for maybe two feet, so it's not very long. And suddenly you're on the other side. Swinging around your flashlight, you can see effectively a copy of where you just were. It's, just, it's effectively just mirrored, uh, but a bit larger. It opens up quite a bit. You see way more bats here. You saw maybe five, six or so. In the entrance it's a ton here though and they're all just like chittering away very 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 softly and looking around you can see the cave probably goes in a bit but this is where it effectively says you know humans turn around it's clearly not built for you P people do not go in this far it has not been explored i catch rabies from a bat so let's go not that i think all bats have rabies just to be clear it's safe I to be that. safe, safe I to be safe i think the chance is just higher I mean, it's mostly bats that go out during the day. So that have rabies? Safe. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So these are probably safe? Question mark? Well, you know... Just don't maybe... get pooped on. I'm not sure if you can get it from poop, though. <laughs> oh, I mean, don't get pooped on no matter what. Just don't look sure. up and say, wow. <laughs> Opens my mouth wow. to say, wow, and it falls right in. Uh, roll a 1d100, please. Yeah. You're now back. Congratulations. All right, did, um... you, did you say you go in further or you turn around? Like, how um, dangerous does it look, like, going further? Is it, like, actually a tight squeeze or something, or is it just, like, so it goes, to get through? It goes from a tight squeeze to a relatively open area. It's, it's actually larger than where you guys just were. But Am I getting any vibes? If you've been caving before or anywhere, uh, you, either you or your character, obviously, cave tours have railings. They have paths mm -hmm. that are all man-made. This looks like that. With no paths, no railing. So that moment when you're walking and look down and go, wow, I would die if I fell. You get that feeling looking around in a couple different angles. So like this, it's, it's not made for man. We're so used to that feeling of like, oh, I'm allowed to walk here. Paths, you know, doors, things like that. It, it, I don't want to say it looks alien, but you get that instant feeling of I do not belong here. Unwelcoming. Oh, but Very unwelcoming. What's that feeling? All right, Jay. I uh, yeah, in. yeah. This, obviously. Is, this is all about <laughs> Like yeah, Jay's I think... definitely already going around, like looking at places and seeing if there's anything weird. Uh, I don't know how to tell you this, Jay, but we could literally fall to our death. I know, isn't that exciting? 
Uh, Nobody will ever find us again. Oh my god. Thrilling. I well, try that's going why, back. That's why we have the rope. Okay, you but what's the rope here, safe. to? <laughs> you? I'm sorry. If you want, you can tie it around the... Uh... Okay, but wait, hold a second. We're, we're, we have rope that is tied around us. And it's yes. not tied anywhere else. Yeah, but you can hold it on. You can tie it around one of these stalagmites or a bigger rock. Is this a pretty like old cave that would be perfect for cave tours, or is it just a like a hole well, in the wall? No, I mean he said he said it was like not cave tour worthy. You could die in multiple ways. Yes, right, it, right. There's no clear path for them to even build. I'd say about ten feet after that little crack that you guys went through, there's a pretty slope just drop. Steep, sorry, yeah. steep, steep slope that just drops. Honestly, I, I, I think we should go back. Oh, give me one second at least. I'll make sure I don't fall. I'll like shine my light down, down into the hole as close as I can get. The deer looks up at us. No, <laughs> <laughs> mouth covered in blood. <laughs> Did you not see the sign? It says no solicitors. <laughs> That's the, it's wearing a little hat. Uh, I hear about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> the horror. <laughs> Alrighty. Looking about some more, uh, Jay, you're effectively able to come to the same conclusion, a la more visual and less instant guttural reaction of, I don't belong here. You physically see, ah yes, this place, you know, to put it lightly, sucks ass. Very difficult to get around. It doesn't look like anyone or anything has been here walking or crawling around. It looks mostly just like bats are coming through here. And looking at the crack that you guys like to squeeze through, there is so the, the crack comes up definitely past your guys' height. I'm about to say seven or so feet, but higher than that, it looks like it's a bit more open for the bass to kind of fly through. And it looks as if they pretty frequently fly through that upper part of the gap. So from what you can tell, just a place for animals to live. So there's absolutely nothing of note in here. Not that you can see now. Well, then I guess we go to the next cave. As you guys come back, uh, Margot and Graham are kind of just 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 hanging, and he's a, a little nervously waiting, as if to say like, okay, it can't be that interesting, right? They haven't called back or anything. He sees you guys come back and just audibly, oh, thank God. He was uh, very clearly freaking just, out for the two of you. Just a sheer drop with pointy bits at the end. Wonderful. Glad I didn't go in there. To be honest, Margo, I think you should go next. <laughs> I will. I would rather not die, personally. Um, and it would be very awkward if, wouldn't die if I was, you know, impaled by a stalagmite. Wait. Yes. What did they yes, say about? Might on the floor, tight on the ceiling. Yeah. Whew. I was just about to ask what that thing was. So you got me. You're good. That part I've known forever. Then I learned a whole bunch of new terminology at the last case we went to and forgot all of it. Oh, no. In Dutch, it's even easier. What is because it? Because it's stalag mit and stalag tit. And tit translates to tits and tits hang. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, and that's how it works. I you know what? am never going to forget that. Cool. <laughs> I love it. I guess that's so from exactly now on. They're called selectates. Hell yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. And after this, we just head to the uh, next cave. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Perfect. As you guys are, Graham breaks out some uh, trail mix, and he's like, "Officer, you guys are like, be good, be good. We've been walking for a while. Sure. Hell yeah. Is this the cave that your friend pointed to? Uh, should be yeah. Like, I only marked two caves, I believe. Yes. Well, well like, I mean, the, the, he, he started with one and went to another, right? Yeah. Yeah. And from what you can tell, he was effectively doing that just to show you this thing is a cave. The, the, the blank area is a cave, uh, rather than pointing out the first one. So then this is probably the, the important one. Yes. A good thing we went to this one first to get that out of uh, Carson's system. Yeah. And now the next one will be terrifying, probably. Probably, which is why I'm going in. The next location is about equidistant from where you guys started. So it's about another two or so hour hike. It looks like it only would have taken maybe an hour and a half or so. But as we move further and further into the woods, the trees become tighter and the canopy sprawls out further and further. As we're getting closer to this location that Jay marked on the map, we're seeing a few different trees. These ones sprawl out, so the leaves and you know, roots and everything seem to be taking over more surface area. Therefore, 
blotting out whatever sun we might have. Uh, wait, as in they can't dig underground as well? They are, but it almost looks like they're kind of running into each other. That makes any sense. Yeah. Those nice big trees with gnarly ass branches. Oh, yeah. Or root trail. Mm hmm. Uh, both, actually. And further and further we move in. Uh, judging by where we are on the map, at least with time, it's impossible to see the sun. So, fortunately, you guys still have watches and such on you that do indeed work. Looking at things, we should be arriving at least close by soonish. Before we do, though, the ground itself dips notably that in fact this whole area you have to stop and kind of right your footing you guys didn't really realize as you were going forward that the ground was just sloping slightly further and slightly further and this next sudden slope isn't so sudden that it's you know like a 45 degree drop but rather than it being like one degree half degree at a time it's much more notable like five degrees and you guys can actually see the trees kind of growing downward from where we are so we can actually physically see the slope and as we very carefully it slows down our pace, but we're able to kind of go this path. Graham starts visibly sweating, not because we've been here for so long, but he's looking around kind of like he's very much giving up the vibe of I don't like it here, but he doesn't know why. And he doesn't voice any of this. He just starts fiddling with his hands and, you know, trying to shove them in his Are pockets. Are we getting the same feeling? Not initially. Graham gets this feeling maybe... I'd say 10 or so, 20 minutes prior. It's so just a general unease. What catches the three of you instantly off guard, though, is while the trees are incredibly tight, up ahead, after this slope ceases and sort of levels out, it almost looks as if there's a path intentionally made of trees. You guys have seen nothing of the sort until now. Do you guys believe in fairies? Yeah, it was just like, um, you mean like a fairy ring? <laughs> I, I do believe in very big mouths, too. You believe in big mouths? I mean, I haven't seen any big teeth, so. I'm a little <laughs> I'm, I'm knocking on one of the trees like, this is a tree, right? <laughs> As you knock, it is definitely indeed a tree. Uh, the knock kind of causes Graham to jump a bit, and he sees what you're doing in, to a neighboring tree. He does the same and goes, yeah, looks like bark to me. This path, to be clear, it almost looks as if someone, you know, basically moses just like parted the trees to make a path. It looks very intentional. And it loops and curves around this the corner. Is, you can't see where it's going. Can this I... This is basically a big um, hole we're walking into? Ish, yeah. It, it slopes Ish. down and kind of evens out. Does it look, like, spooky? Define. I, I would say define spooky, but this is the first uh, time you guys have seen... You guys are really far... It, into the woods. Is it the bad vibes? Like, oh. why is this here in the middle of the woods in the oh, middle yeah. of nowhere? Yeah, can yeah. Can I read a bad situation for this? Yes, you definitely can. All right, I'm going to try doing that then. Yeah, to, to be super clear, the trees have been, as trees are, randomly scattered up until this point. Even the. So it's a little too intentional to be natural. It is far too intentional. There's literally a walkway that is two people wide going straight and then turning left. All but right. it's supernatural. Dun, dun, dun. A nine. All right, you can ask me one of those questions. Oh, gosh. Now that I've done it, I can't remember what I even asked beforehand. Does it look man-made? It looks intentional, but I don't want to say man-made. It might be. This looks very, very intentional, though. All right. If you were to turn around and look where you guys came from, the slope is more notable. You guys can see that you guys have come down quite a ways to get here. So it's flattening and there is a walkway being made. Correct. Alright, I think we should just keep going. Unless maybe instead of read a bad situation, I should have done trust your gut. I would say without needing to roll, like, you know, trusting your gut and such, looking forward, unless you want to not walk the path, that would basically be what, what question would be answered is that what you're looking for because there's two uh, options yeah oh. but i guess i guess the thing is though is that like even if it's a even if like if i had done read a bad situation and and the answer was it's very very bad like we would have to go there anyway you know there's nowhere else to go that's what we yeah. came here i mean for. we could come back with like bigger guns i guess yeah that's our other option but i'm pretty sure all of us already brought our biggest guns so 
Yeah, and also I almost worry that I, I mean I don't have my sword and a sniper isn't gonna be much use in a cave. Oh, and next time we bring a flamethrower, I guess. We're not in the cave though, right? Yeah. But we're going towards it with intent to go in, right? Uh, but can we see the cave from here? No, definitely not. Maybe oh, so this might not, not even cave? be a cave. Oh, it's something similar to a cave. That's what we know. Yeah, like a thicket. But maybe I'm just going to keep cave. walking forward. Alrighty. But yes, I'm going to get my gun out. Oh, of course, of course. I am actually going to do the same. Your normal yeah. gun or your rifle? <laughs> my rifle, and I am going to hang back a little. Sure, I'll take out my shotgun as well. <laughs> when you say hang back, are you behind Graham? Yeah. Does Graham, he doesn't have anything to protect himself, does he? No, as you guys are suiting up, he's like, whoa, 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 what are Actually, we doing? But I have three weapons. Well, I'm not going to give him a gun because I'm pretty so sure I'm gonna he give, use I, one. Well, I have a baseball bat that I can you do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'll work. So I'll give him the baseball bat. He, he, his, his whoa, 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 has his hands out and you just kind of place a baseball bat in his hands. He's like, ah, hold up, wait, wait, what, why, why are we suiting up? What are we doing? Uh, Graham, <laughs> we can see clear as day that this place makes you nervous and uh, we agree. Oh, so we're, just, we're in shoot we're, mode. We're, we're covering our bases. Um, some weird stuff has been happening, Graham. Obviously, you're aware of that. Um, and in the event that something bad happens, I don't want to die. Fair enough, we're just being cautious. Sorry, I just wasn't expecting Margaret to pull out a sniper rifle. Uh, she does that sometimes. It's a little Don't weird. worry, your back is safe. Alright, sorry, just, I'm surrounded by people with guns. Little, little uneasy, I trust y'all, just, you know, gun instinct, all that, plus all the shit in front of me, it's just, it's a lot. We're good though, we're good. He, he's like, no, head in the game, head in the game, head in the game. We got this, alright, sorry. Alright. Calm, we're good. Alright, he grips the bat, and you guys head on forward, moving down this path. And as it slopes down and turns to the left, you see the path continues. It winds and turns and twists through the forest. It is impossible. But it stays clear? It stays clear, and it stays exactly two people across. So shoulder to oh shoulder, God. two folk could walk down here. It doesn't get any wider or any tighter. It continues oh. to move. Were well, you I to look through the woods to see around them where the path goes, you would be unable to do so. Do I get any feeling similar to when that deer was staring at me? Yes. I would say part and of that thought, is your read about situation. But I'm not seeing anything in between the trees. Let's see here. You guys walk. Oh, from God. I did not like that long pause at <laughs> all. <laughs> Y'all walk for a good second. Honestly, all of you roll me just sharp. You, mean, you guys pressured me into not taking my sword. I hate you all. Hey, you got a gun. Got a big gun. Oh God, it's fine. I have a two for sharp. Oh God, mark mark your XP. All right, uh, we got a six, a ten, and a six. So Carson and well, the fact that your name is still Mellow. Well, I failed. What does that mean? I don't notice anything. Two things, actually. Oh God, as we're walking about. So I'm going to tie these basically together. So for both Margo and Carson, uh, we're going to add two pips of stress. You tell me which track you want it on. Uh, they have to go in the same thing? Yes. So two pips in one of the boxes. Uh, do two stress. Okay. And Margo? Too agitated, because this is very clearly something bad. And she doesn't have a sword. And I don't have my sword. That's fair, actually. So looking about, the only failure that I'm going to administer to Margo and Carson is the stress. But you guys are all going to see a something. We're trying to peer through the woods to see if we can see around the corner to the next bend. You notice very quickly that you cannot. You see through the woods, and you see more trees, more woods, bushes, and things of that nature. Ha 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 but you do not see the clear opening. When you take this turn, you should have been able to see the opening very clearly, actually. There's no way there were that many trees between this turn and the next. Jay, you also notice this, but it doesn't strike you quite as suddenly. Margo and Carson, you can't help but now focusing on this detail. This place makes less and less sense the further we get in. And Margo, you're slightly annoyed you didn't bring your sword. I Jay, want though. to say Jay isn't faced by this because he had a similar experience in the hallway 
yeah, down the staircase. Oh yeah, and uh, Wait, something else. The infinite hallway, basically. Mm, yes. Uh, Jay, you will see something for the briefest of moments, though. Margo and Carson, you merely see as you're looking around because your eyes can't focus on a particular location. You see what seems to be strips of flesh between the trees, but it's gone uh, as fast as it's there. Uh, who sees that? Uh, okay, wait, pause. Do you mean strips of flesh as in literally like strips of it or like flesh being seen in between the trees? Flesh being seen between the trees, but they're so tightly packed together, you can't tell what you're looking at. Told you it's a mouth. Uh, Jay, though. I, I really see, wish that we had not brought Graham. <laughs> you see something different, Jay. You're able to stay more focused. And between two of the trees, as uh, Margo and Carson are kind of focusing about, you're able to pause for a moment and you catch one of these. It's very, very clearly a face. A face staring back at you, a human face, actually. <laughs> Except you notice, like, you are the 10, so I'll give you a little extra juice here. You notice a few things. One, you notice it's far too low to be someone standing looking at you. You also notice, between the same gap, I guess if you want to call it, of trees, you see a second face, at least half of one, also looking at you. But when I say looking at you, there are no eyes. There are no teeth. There's nothing behind this face. It looks like it's just skin. And it moves. And it's gone. Well, I assume I we all stop like moving it. at this point. Uh, yes, I wish to turn around. Uh, we need more info. I gotta be honest us. with you, I am literally afraid to turn my back to this infinite hallway. <laughs> infinite pathway. Would you like me to stand there walk behind you? <laughs> yeah, keep looking the other way. I'll look the other one. All right, Carson, that means you are at the front of this train. All right. As Margo's in the very back, and then Graham's, uh, well, he's the, he's the sandwich, I guess. <laughs> he's yeah. the sandwich, and he's protecting. Yeah, we don't want him to get hurt. Does he get a weird feeling? Yeah, yeah, no, he had a weird feeling. The, well, actually, does he panic inside here? You don't see him panicking, but he's gripping the bat tighter, and he's looking about, and he looks... So he's up, aware and nervous. Of something. He looks... Uh... He looks up, though, to the trees. He has a very good sixth sense. He looks up. Wait, that's right. What is up? Wait a second. Yes? He does have a... Does that have anything to do with, like, the psychic ability? Yeah, definitely. Now that you guys have stopped he, moving... He was good at finding places, right? Yeah. Finding things. So far, yeah. You guys have stopped moving, though. And because of this, you notice there's a sound dancing amongst the trees. Oh, no, no, no. It's no. rather it's rather dark. I, I assume you guys would have your flashlights out or something. It's already getting dark? It's dark because the sun can't penetrate through the canopy. Oh, no. Yeah, we would have pulled out flashlights. Oh, God. In fact, I probably have a flashlight on my gun. <laughs> this feels so much... This is like the Forbidden Forest. This feels bad. Uh, oh, excellent, Margaret. That works perfectly, then. Uh, as you guys are looking about, you see things that are dangling from the trees. And you notice that they're kind of bumping into each other very similar to oh shoot what are they called like the wooden uh like a chime but the wooden ones you know what i'm talking the about wind chimes yeah it's, it's similar to a similar to a wood chime but they're not made of metal it's made of a different made of the wood seemingly but as you is it made of bone yes as no you as you shine your light up you see multiple human bones that are hanging from the trees <sighs> And something you instantly notice is the first one you see is half of a jawbone. Mm. There is something scratched into it. Very, very intentionally. And Jay, in the back of your mind, you hear, Get it! What? Uh, is it like my, uh, my friend saying that, or is it like a random get it? Yeah, it's your friend. You gotta get that jawbone? I don't like that. I guess we can't hear it, though. I mean, I'm not gonna... I'm just telling you guys to, like, sit still for a second and I start climbing. Oh, God. Keep your eyes peeled. Also, I don't think it's for the best if we stay on the path. You don't think we should stay on the path? No, I think we should stay on the path. Oh, okay. That was, and like, agreed. It's probably not gonna end well. Yeah. 
Fortunately, it's uh, quite easy to stay on the path and to climb up while staying within eyeshot of everyone. You notice this particular jawbone is clattering and bouncing against what might be a femur, possibly? It has the same inscriptions, but this, this jaw sticks out to you more. Uh, go ahead and roll me Act Under Pressure, Jay. Under Pressure. Do, 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 do. Nice, attend! Ooh. Woo! Alrighty, bud. Very consistent, apparently. Very consistent. I know, right? 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Ho! Oh. Alright. We climb up. Wood. With a. Uh, literally. I mean, it makes sense. He is used to climbing, I guess. Yeah. And you ascend this tree with relative ease. You're able to keep your cool. And you notice it's. It's tied by some, like, old, but thin, like a hempen rope. And it's, like, pierced through part of the jaw. But if you, if you pull on it, you can just snap the twig that's connected to it. So you can easily take it down. I do, uh, do just that. And as you kind of snap it free, you actually see there was a second jawbone, most likely the partner to this one, hanging just outside the way. The one in your hand is clean, but the other still has scraps of meat hung to it. Fortunately, your mind is focused. This doesn't cause you to waver, and you're able to slowly slide the jawbone into your backpack, pocket, something open, and you can easily climb back down the tree. Like, was the inscription readable as I was uh, grabbing it? It's not in the language you recognize. You're not sure if they're runes or what, but they are scratched in with what seems to be a knife. And then now that you're looking closer at it, it looks as if there is a, a dark ink. So they basically like cut into the bone and then painted within those scratches with some sort of dark material, like an ink or something. I think it's time we head back then. Agreed. Get moving. As you will turn and begin to leave, you do hear somewhat of a rustling in the woods. And it's coming from both sides of you. I Graham, think we can get uh, moving a little Graham, faster. stay close. All right, Graham holds, okay. holds the, the, the back closer, and he's like, all right, all right, all right, we got this. And yes, you, you guys speed up, and from what you notice, the path back is exactly the same as the path here. It has not changed. There's no dead ends. In fact, all the trees look relatively the same. It's not getting any darker or anything. And as we progress outward, we see more and more light being able to pierce through the canopy up ahead. So we're getting closer to whatever the exit might be. And as we head outward, uh, I want all of you to roll me act under pressure. Oof. Hey, look at all the 10. Uh, 12? Oh, oh my god. god. Too bad I don't have advanced successes. Do you even get advanced successes? Basically, they're crits. You have to unlock them. It's a, one of I the... Uh, unlock them back. It's just by leveling. That's it. You just yeah, level. it's... Um, I think it's an improvement. Yep, it's an improvement. That's a, you basically choose a move, and it turns to an advanced version of that. It's pretty cool. And by that time, you should be having a plus two or plus three in it, so you'll be getting it more frequently. Yeah, anyway. it's advanced improvements. Yeah, basically after you got your, uh, your class, your base class stuff at least. As you'll head forward, uh, Jay, you are calm, you are focused, you can see everything. You're the first to see it. It is difficult to describe, but I'll do so all the same. The path on the way here is clear. The path on the way back is also clear. But you hear just beyond the rustling, something moves. And just at ankle level... It seems maybe like one of the bones fell or something along those lines. No, it's a plant. And this plant is oh. moving outward from the, the bushes and the white trees. With big spikes and red tips. I was just going to ask that. It is, but something no, very. At least shoot it. <laughs> something very particular you notice, Jay, is that it's not moving out of the trees. It looks more like it's growing. Out of the trees. Oh, no, God. no, not out of the ground. It's coming from the woods. From the trees? Oh, yeah. no. At almost a 90 degree angle, it's coming outward. And it looks like it's trying to stay low. Because you rolled a 12, you're easily able to aim your weapon and blast it. And it explodes into shards. We have an 8 and 9 from Mello and Carson. Mello. Oh, yes. Margo. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say the name. Sorry. Margo and Carson. So. A success, but a mixed success. Fortunately, Jay was in the lead and is able to blow whatever this is up. After the bullets just tear this thing asunder, it indeed struck true. And you hear this really low and deep just, just, just emanate from the woods. It sounds like a creaking and a groaning, almost like a, of a ship. 
you can feel it in your chest more than you can hear it. So it's like a woody kind of groan? Yeah, it's a creaking. It's very, very loud. It's coming from all around you. I, I will say, Jay, with, with that success and the uh, instant response, we'll just say both Carson and, 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 and Margo, because he was up front. Neither of you run into it or bump into it. You're able to dodge it just as easily, and he destroyed it. So for now, you, you know you're safe, and it, it is time to go. I think we should run, <laughs> but that's just me. Uh, no, I think we should walk fast. Running is a good way to get your ankles yeah. snapped out under you. I guess that's true. Extra careful. I and wish I had my sword. You, as long as neither of you try to pick it up. I want to pick it up. All right, we just run. We just run past it. What's Graham doing? Uh, Graham is thinking as close to you guys as humanly possible, and he's not looking down, up, or anywhere. He's looking straight. He's just like, go, 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 go. But he's trying not yep. to run. He's trying to panic. All right, keep him in the middle. Let's get going. All right, and as you guys do, you're able to keep this pace. You keep it strong. As Margo recommended, you do not run. You guys basically power walk out of this area. And slowly, you realize the ground begins to arc its way up one degree at a time. And suddenly you're surrounded by a random assortion, trees and bushes and nature. And we keep going. I will lead the way. Oh, don't Trade stop. Extra on the lookout for uh, anything look watching us, basically. Yes. Graham lets out a very loud sigh as if he was holding his breath that entire time. And he just turns to you guys yeah. and says, We're going back to the town then? Honestly, yeah. Graham, you held it together really well. We are absolutely leaving. Thanks. Yeah, I'm proud of you, man. All right. That's good. I'm happy to go back to the town now. Yep. Yeah. None of you got hit by that thing. I don't think so. <laughs> I know. I want to. Check for scratches we while we move. Check? With a quick five check, you guys realize that none of you were scratched by anything at all. Probably only because of Jay's advanced success. Indeed. Okay. <laughs> so I'm counting it as a normal success, but because he reacted so quickly and he was in the lead, he basically prevented the two of you from bumping into it. That and a success Ooh. is a success, so you dodge it regardless. A failure would mean something hits you. And it is going to be definitely some time, a couple hours for you guys to get back, but we know our way. Graham's able to focus now a bit easier. Fortunately, with our map, kind of pointing left, right, and you know whatnot, uh, we're able to get back to Galva Hills. And it's it's definitely late, but you guys can see over the horizon the town is well lit enough and very inviting. You guys hear the voices of just people you know, having fun, drinking, eating, uh, doing as they do, uh, pretty early on. We'll nonchalantly join them, as if nothing happens. All right, yeah. I mean, no one questions you guys. They, they, they saw four people enter the woods and four people exited the woods. Y'all seem just fine, fortunately. Well, I was really stressful. I did not like that one freaking bit. And as you guys I guess are we'll have to go back, though. As you guys are kind of hanging out and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I don't think uh, we should go back without some more information at this point. Yeah, Gr Graham looks to you, Jay, and says, you might ask why you grabbed that thing? What was no, that? I'll, I'll show it to the, the rest of the guys because of this, and I'll point to the writing. When you do this, uh, are you guys looking at it in one of, the, uh, one of your guys' rooms? Yeah, I mean, definitely wouldn't put it out in public, at least. You guys all group up together, and Graham just looks at it like, what the shit? And just shrugs, says, all right, it's kind of gross, but is that real? Is that actually someone's jaw? Um, like, it is a human jaw, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, it looks real enough. It definitely isn't a proper anything, or what I can tell. He looks away from it and nods as if to say, okay, I'm not going to question why you grabbed it. You know, this, this is part of the investigation. Like, I, I understand. Just he, he, uh, he, he both wanted a closer look and then regretted it upon asking, so. I mean, this is a clean-picked one, right? There's no flesh in it? Nope. Completely clean. Okay. So, um, how much you want to bet that all those bodies inside that, uh, that road are forgotten people? You would not be surprised. You mean like fence there? Possibly. Yeah, it might be. He just like stares off in the space, the thinking like, still okay. pieces hanging with flesh on them. Look, I'm gonna be honest, bud. We will do what we can to find out what happened to Finn, but uh, chances are low he's still alive. Yeah, I kind of figured that at this point. Honestly, I just want someone to believe me. I don't want him to be forgotten. I guess is my problem. So I appreciate what y'all are doing. That still makes you the out here, though. Why have you not forgotten about it yet? 
Man, I don't know. At this point, the three of you believe me. We just saw some weird shit back there, and y'all are running. So regardless, you know, I'm glad you guys are still sticking around. Well, that's what we're here for. And it is indeed uh, relatively late, but you guys can kind of go over there are restaurants and such. You guys can go around, grab food, uh, chit chat with people, effectively, whatever you want. Um, I'd say it's about six, I... seven. Okay, after we get back and calm down, I do actually want to drive out and get that text sent days out. I mean, I don't think we want to stay here anyway at this point because we can't really do yeah, anything I more, want, I think. I want to um, send out that piece of bark with the blood on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I want to go around, like, I don't know, asking about, like, if there's any weird stories or lore about this woods. I'd mention, like, things that we have seen. Yeah, that's oh, a well, good that'll, idea. That'll, that'll be the town people. I heard a story people. about a uh, forest that ate people. I've never heard anything about that. People yeah, disappearing and never existing ever again. Okay, and when you guys say that, do you, mean, that. do you mean you're going back to, like, the main, the main town? Yeah. N- no, you want to you want to ask the locals first. Yeah, yeah well, where we the are, locals. Where we are in the hotel, basically. That's but town area. I do need to send out that sample. Yeah. So wherever uh, well, that is, uh, yeah, g- I, I was gonna suggest that after we well spend the night there, basically we go back to the city anyway. Yeah. No, I I would say give it to me, and I'll get my text and that sent now, and then I'll come back and we can spend the night. All right, that sounds good. Okay, so seems more efficient. Realistically, that would mean you're basically driving overnight, Margot, to go back to the city, and then you're gonna be back yeah. the next day. Is that fine? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, if you're I, gonna I do think that... it's more important to get that sent ace out. Okay, I, we can definitely do that. That means basically Carson and Jay, you guys can ask around the town and do whatever you want. Four. I will say for reference, I mentioned this in our city of mist campaign. You guys can. If you're not sure, you can kind of do a vibe check. Well, once again, you don't you don't need to ask a particular NPC. You can sometimes. Um, you can you know chat with whoever you want, of course. But if you just like, we walk around just talking to people. That is fully something you can do. You can always do that. Just schmoozing is a role. So yeah, I'm going to apply my negative charm <laughs> uh, to randomly ask people about stuff like that. Can I help out? Uh, you can do it separately, or you can help. Yeah, your choice. I mean, how, how is your charm? How's my charm? Yeah, Carson's charm two. should be really good. It's a two. Yeah, in that case, I'll just be helping you out instead. Well, I haven't because rolled my role is terrible. <laughs> That's fine. All right. Uh, what is it? Investigate a mystery? Yes. So, are you looking for anything in particular before you roll, or yeah, like any lore on the local woods? Who can share any about the stories woods? that people know? Anything that's like a one of those weird rumors that people talk about but don't really think exists. Okay, especially I, 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 ask uh, like the older people. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm, about, like, I'm about to say how are you... urban legends. Urban legends. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I was going to say, how are you requiring this information? So you're asking the locals specific to older folk. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think older folk and teenagers, especially if there's like a, a a hermit that lives somewhere at the edge of the woods, would be asking them. All right. Roll for hermits, please. Roll for hermits. I do roll now. Yes. Go ahead and roll now. Damn it. Oh, that's good. It's good. Eight is a success. Think, you want that. S- seven, eight, nine is good. I think a help action for me won't change that, that one. Correct. It would go to a nine, which is still a big success. Uh, alrighty, so... All I asked for is one full success. Uh, that, that, is, that is a success. You're good. Don't worry. But basically, you either want a, uh, a success or you want a failure to get experience. <laughs> one of the two. Okay. This just means we won't find the elusive hermit. Uh, so, I will tell you this. Asking around people... They have no answers for you, specifically the locals. They literally have nothing to say to you, not because they're standoffish. You know, you ask if there's any, uh, you know, oh, any, any like spooky stories of local really? blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, yeah, you, you mean like the, uh, oh, God, what's he called? Uh, the jackalope and sillier things, really goofy cryptids that people have heard of. Like, oh, you mean like a Bigfoot? And you're like, well, no, not a Bigfoot. It's not like misleading, but they're they're mentioning the most basic ones you guys have already heard of, and but nothing actually, matches. I mean, maybe I mean, nothing pertains to the specifically. Is, maybe whatever it is. I mean, it gets rid of people that have interacted with it, right? You f- yeah, think so makes yes. sense. It even goes so far as to jumbling up technology, apparently. Mm. Except the All photo right. that Grant made. So, so this is Grant. basically a dead end. Uh, no. So asking most people, you basically get nothing. Okay. But 
you guys, uh, I mentioned before, there were some other folks staying at Season's Comfort with you all. As you're kind of asking around, one of them speaks up to kind of like, hey, you know, we guys, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say as you guys are asking around, uh, it leads you to somewhere outside of Season's Comfort. And uh, as you guys are kind of thinking shit, like, hey, no one's got any good answers. Uh, a woman in her like mid 30s, she has about auburn uh, shoulder length hair and a fairly athletic build. Uh, she walks up to you all and says, oh, uh, hey, aren't you guys asking questions to the locals? Asking yeah, for like well, weird shit? Yeah, love hearing stories about, you know, urban legend stuff like that. Every town has something. Yeah, are, are you guys reporters or like, what are y'all? Forgetting a disappearance. You also say thrill seekers. Ghost hunters on a mission. <laughs> we're big food hunters. I she, mean, maybe it would be better to pretend that we're knowledgeable. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she she kind of smiles at that. And uh, you notice she's wearing, she has uh, no gloves on, but on her right hand, she has like a large, not a band-aid, but like a, like a gauze. And it's covering almost the entirety of like the back of her hand. I'll say half the back of her hand. And she well, kind what of, happened? she adjusts her rifle on her shoulder. Oh. As, as, as she looks at you guys. She says, well, I, I'm here for hunting and, you know, I've been looking for, looking for some BCs and such. Maybe nothing as strange as like a cryptid, but I... Uh can I ask you a question? It might be kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, what's up? What happened to your hand? Oh, something something cut me while I was out uh, hunting the other day. Uh, do you happen to know if it was the plant that you touched? You know, it might have been. Uh, there, there was a rabbit, and I shot it. I went to pick it up, and I cut my hand, the strange plant. Mm, I Can describe you, uh, the plant. show me where the map about that happened? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead and whip that out real quick. It was right about, uh, yeah, right here, right here, right here. And where she points to is somewhere past where you guys were camping, sort of not equidistant, but between the boring cave, the creepy cave, and where you guys were camping. So closer to the creepy cave? Yeah. Mm, I feel like... that checked out. This I have a bad feeling Interesting about her. in this place. <laughs> Yeah, are you guys like you guys said you were like experts on something like plants or I mean I, I cut myself and I had them look at it, but it's I don't know it's not too bad, but it's uh, not invasive God? species. Yes, God. Um, how many God. days did Finn disappear after he got the cut? That's what I was gonna ask. More than a week, wasn't it? Graham it was, and Finn it was a month. Yeah, Graham and Finn went hiking in early August, and Finn went missing early September. Okay, so yeah, a month. And how long has she been here? When did that happen? Yes, she got here. Let's say you guys have been here for like a day or two. She got here probably like a week ago. So like five days, four days before you guys got here. And I was thinking the plant could like that? tag them with something. Yeah. Or maybe they get like, I don't know, an infection that get they want to return to the place. Exactly. That too. Yeah. So did y'all say you were specialists or, I mean, these people are really nice, but they weren't able to really help me with this. Something like that. We may usually come around for, you know, invasive species, stuff like that. Oh, I, I'm, oh God, is that, is it, I mean, I, I'm fine. I was cut, oh, uh, four or five days ago, and I'm not, I'm not dead. I and mean, she shows you, like, obviously her hand's still wrapped up, but, like, the skin on her hand doesn't look black, or it's not, like, pulsed or swelling or anything. And it's probably still best to get it checked out. Well, that's what I'm saying, I, I did, you mean, like, leave? What's your name? Oh. I got, I got it checked out here. Uh, my name is Maya. Maya Avison. Okay. Does anybody know that you're here? Uh, Are you yeah. with anybody? I, you know, honestly, that yeah. sounded really creepy. I'm so sorry. No, no, I I'm just wondering. You're good. I, I'm sure. I guess that does sound creepy in respect, doesn't it? No, you probably saw me uh, with someone. I'm, I'm here with my brother. Oh, uh, okay. And has he? I'll, he doesn't have any cuts or anything, does he? No, lucky him. He's fine. Okay. I shot it. I picked it up. You know, he was. You know, well, it was a while ago, so <laughs> we cooked it up and everything. So it's it's gone, long gone now. Oh. Nice. You know, I feel like I just I'm really worried that like she's just going to disappear from existence like the other guy. Pretty much. I'm yes. pretty sure I can assign I body. I also don't think we can do anything about it. But I'm almost wondering if maybe we should have physical evidence of her just in case. You know what I mean? Yeah. So take some pictures. OK, that is kind of weird. I, I, mean, have already, can, like, I don't know. <laughs> invite her to dinner. Offer like to 100%. take a look and then steal her bandages. If if one if some guy randomly was like, "Are you here alone?" I would be so creeped out. 
Especially if they're like, are you here alone? Can I take your picture? Hell yeah, run. Yeah, like I would not, that would be an immediate red flag. I would be out of there so fast. You, I wouldn't even be a spot in the sky. Like, it's just not, I can't do that. I don't want to be that creepy person. Fair enough. And I, as she looks at you all, she says, well, you guys said you're, are you plant specialists or are you doctors? Like, what are you exactly? Well, not just plants, there's all kinds of things, but in this case, yes. My okay. invasive species are really, you know, bugs, yes. plants. The one we're currently checking out seems to have a uh, belated allergic reaction, so it's probably best if you don't return here for a while, honestly. But we'll have to check it out to make sure if it's actually what we think it is. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to whip it out here, but I could show you back in, um, oh god, where? Uh, I'd say my room, that sounds really awkward, and definitely not the kitchen. I guess they have like a little... Not dining area, but somewhere where they all kind of, you know, hold meetings. I could show you guys inside Seasons Comfort if you want. Maybe you could take a look at it, see if it's infected or... Sure. Sure. Oh, okay, good. I, I, it's been bothering me, but it's, you know, it is what it is. And she leaves you guys... It has been bothering you, though? Yeah, and she kind of she scratches at the palm of her hand a little and then, like, pulls her hand away like, I stop. And as she brings you guys into uh, Seasons Comfort, she, like, looks around a bit and, you know, there's no, no one watching. She gives a wave to Eleanor. Has it been purely physical irritation or? Yeah, so yeah. Often? Oh, it's 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 definitely irritating. Like I said, I asked one of the local doctors here, and he said he's got nothing for it. He's not really sure what it is. He's not seen it before. Basically, just keep some you know ointment on it, bandage it up, don't touch it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But and as she's saying that, she's like peeling off this chunk of gauze, and she has a cut across her hand, uh, basically starting at the the bottom of where her pinky meets her hand. And it goes all the way across down to, I'd say, just past her wrist. Almost onto her, like, her oh. forearm. That's a long gash. Oh, that's a... That is a huge It didn't cut. need stitches? And it's not a... It's not just a cut. So that's just it. It's a scab that runs all the way from that finger to the mid-wrist. And the scab itself is, like, a fourth of an inch thick. Uh, do you mind if we take some pictures of this? Yeah, definitely. I I know people say don't pick at scabs, but I I keep accidentally picking it off. I know it just grows back worse, but I don't How know. How many it's, times have you picked it off? Like three times. Oh God. I know it. It look how big it is. How do I not? I guess I can wear a glove. Uh, I'm sorry. It. What does it look like when it when you peel a scab off? It's just raw skin under. It's not. I mean, it's not. Like oozing or anything that's what you're worried about but it doesn't look yeah. infected right and she shows it to you and it's literally just a scab that is a fourth of an inch thick is very thick by the way running from her pinky yeah down to just past her wrist and she's like i mean it's, yeah. it's kind of gross a little <laughs> i take some pictures with my phone yeah she doesn't mind she holds her hand out and says yeah please if you can figure out what this is like I said, I'm not swelling up or anything, and I don't feel feverish. It, it might just be, like, irritants on your body that want to get out. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe the sweat. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm out in the woods. Maybe I should take a day off or so. Just don't go out. Yeah. But I'm, I'm here on vacation, though, so it feels stupid not to go out. Yeah. I mean, I get that. But we don't know how bad the, you know, the infestation of that stuff is. True, true. In the woods. See, that's weird. I... God, the way you described it, it, it kind of looked like that, but I couldn't find it. Like, I, 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 I looked for it, you know, maybe take some home with me or something. I know sometimes, like with poisons or irritants, you know, I'm assuming at least, uh, with like, that was like poison ivy and such. If you have it, yeah. you, can, you can help reduce inflammation and such uh, by pulling from the source. I thought maybe if there's something in it, I could, you know, bring it home with me and get it looked at. But I mean, that is a great line of thought. You should definitely do that. Yeah, um, it was gone. I mean, after it cut me, it, poof, it disappeared. Yeah, we've been having that issue. Uh, yeah. Wait, what? I mean, it makes sense. Because uh, you, it's not the, you're not the it's only a, It's an elusive species. It tends a, to. Yeah. It's basically a plant that likes to move, weirdly enough. Is that normal? No. No. That's why it's that invasive. Is, I was oh. just going to say, that's why it's invasive. <laughs> oh, weird, weird. Okay, so I found something interesting then. That's, well. I say good to know, but as she's looking at the wound, she puts the covering back on it and kind of, ugh, all right. And you noticed while she was showing it to you guys, her left hand kept kind of like inching up to scratch it, and she kept having to like pull it away to the point where she shoved her hand in her pocket. Yeah. Do not, under any circumstances, keep scratching the scab off. I will try my best. Um, 
if you guys you're, would recommend I, would, I stay in i would recommend staying in and i would also recommend that your brother keep an eye on you keep you know, an eye on you case. um and if he sees you scratching it to make sure that he gets you to stop okay that works like if it really gets annoying you can i don't have a cost put around it so you can't scratch it that is true i could do that well honestly oh man it's a blessing and a relief to run into some other folk here uh, not that they were ignoring it. They gave me suggestions, but every time I keep showing it to them, they just gave me the same suggestion over and over. Like, oh, it'll be fine. But this, I've never had a scab like this before. It's... Would you say, uh, what did they say exactly the same thing every time? No, not the exact same thing, but they just went, oh, you're back. You know, we recommended, you know, Miss Avison, stop scratching it. I said, I'm not trying to. And they kind of gave me that look of like, oh, you, but I- I'm not trying to, I promise. Yeah. All That's right. Horrible. Yeah. You know, you always do things subconsciously. Yeah, I mean, I saw so the hands in the pocket. Uh, that's why I got this thing over it. So I'll get it figured out. Thank you, though. Honestly, I appreciate it. Will you be here in uh, town for longer? Oh, yeah, for about another uh, another week or so, I'd say. Well, we can't promise we'll find what it is by then. But anyway, uh, could we have some contact info? Yes. I mean, I'm in a room like two, two to the left of where you guys are. But if you call me, you know, it's not really going to get I'm through. Also, but- if we can't figure it out, but within that time, maybe you end up figuring it out later. Yeah, I I mean, I'm sure you understand. I don't want to give you my number now, but if for any reason, uh, if you guys have any like business cards or anything, you can leave that with me. I can call you. And if I check my truck, which is currently not available, but sure. Okay, sure. If um, either of us end up leaving first, I'll just get in contact with you and probably give you my number then. How's that sound? Yeah. Sure. Cool. Excellent. Well, it's a, it's been a long day for me and I, I just ate, so I'm going to Hit the hay, most likely. And then as she walks away, I turn to Carson like, okay, we're definitely going to have to keep an eye on her. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a big yes. She straightens her weapon and then heads up the stairs and gives you guys a quick wave and then uh, heads into the room. She is about two to the left of where you guys are. You guys are in the upper, let's say, like, right part of the wing. She's in the upper left part of the wing. And then when uh, Margot gets back, we'll inform her about that. All right, is there anything? Uh, so Margot will be basically out. She'll be back tomorrow morning. Uh, Carson and Jay, are either of you doing anything uh, tonight? It's about 7 or so, 7, 8. Uh, I mean, not much to do. I guess I'd check on uh, on Graham. Okay. Uh, he seems to be doing better, less shaky, less sweaty. And he lets you know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. It's just that was a situation to be in, if I've ever seen one. Very clearly not used to that kind of stress. Well, you get used to it in all line of work. Okay. Or you no. don't get used to it and have to deal with it all the time. Oh, he liked that first answer a lot more. <laughs> Just kidding, though. Uh, just a little joke for you. Nervous laughter. Uh, uh, to I laugh normally, nervously. You and I both aren't this deep in, so it makes sense, I guess. I am. What she said did uh, raise a point, however. It would have been great if we had been able to take the sample with us. Yeah, I really wanted to do that, but I thought it was a little too dangerous at the time. Under the circumstances, yes, it was not. But we uh, know where to go if we want more samples. Sure, if you want to risk it. I just might. We uh, might want to ask a lot of questions to the ICS before we go back then. Definitely. Which is why I ASAP yeah. to get those uh, tests in. And the bone thing that you have with me and all the other questions we had. So then, yes, by this point, they're doing their thing. Uh, Margo, of course, is going to be late, but ICS can answer questions whenever they need to. All your texts are sent off after, you know, an hour or so of driving. Uh, your phone just starts, like, rapid-firing them. And we'll cut to you real quick, Margo. Do you do anything in particular you want to role-play? Because you know the testing lab will take a second to actually get back to you, but you know by the morning they'll have it all tested and figured out. On your drive back, they'll probably call you. I'm going to be honest, I want to buy something to hide my sword and my gun in. I mean, you can just shove them both in a bag. It'll just be awkward to carry. Uh, fine. I do it. I mean, Jay has been using one of those big ski bags, basically. Yeah. I'm done. Like, it, it works. It's just going to be you know, heavy and awkward. <laughs> a guitar case. I don't care. I don't like not having my sword. Jewelry. And, and n- no, I don't think there's anything I want to role play unless um, Maverick has something to say about the nice, pretty pictures. Hey, sis, where'd you go? That looks great. Oh, we're just hunting some poisonous vines. You have an older brother, by the way. What? What do you mean we have an older brother? So would uh, would he be dropping that information now or holding it? I mean, it it would have either happened now or it would have happened in the three days that we waited, basically. Yeah, I don't see why he'd hold it off. 
All right, well, he decides to drop this on you, so bad timing, but, you know. I mean, he probably didn't realize from the pretty pictures. Oh, of course, he can't help that. Definitely confuses. It's why like, just... oh, she's having fun. Now's a great time to tell her. Yeah, like, why'd you just assault me with all these uh, wonderful... Are you, are you bragging? Are you trying to show off? <laughs> yes. But yeah, he definitely lets you know at some point y'all, y'all need to talk, but he's aware that you're still on the job, so now's a bad time, but just so you know. <laughs> I will send him back a shit ton of exclamations and then... Yes, we will. Uh, so on that, we'll cut back over to Galva Hills uh, with Carson and Jay. I she, want... Would I yeah? have been able to make a sneaky picture of the woman? Like her face. Oh, of her, her? But like, yeah. As Carson did point out how incredibly creepy that is. Yeah, well, Jay is creepy like that. Yes, I would say go ahead and that's definitely going to require a roll because it's indeed super creepy. Uh, just, just roll, just roll me plus cool. Basically, act under pressure. Can you do it without, without being this caught? This is probably gonna end terribly. <laughs> as long as you don't fail, you you do succeed. Hey Carson, you want to help me with this? Uh, you you roll first. Yeah, yeah. If you roll first, yeah. Carson can definitely. Do something I'm, I'm just saying it so that you know. All right, I make success. Uh, you didn't leave the flash or anything on or the sound, so she doesn't really hear it. But we'll so we're we're flashing back obviously like a second or so. Maybe you had your phone out at a weird angle for too long, Jay. So she flashing back, you still succeed and say everything you did. Maybe she's like wondering, like, what are you doing? But before she, she can actually is approaching middle age, she doesn't know exactly how phones work. It's fine. Yeah, so maybe you can play it off as kind of like, oh, I'm just messing with my phone. And she gives you a look like uh, okay. So maybe some creeper vibes a bit, partially why the reason she didn't give you her phone. And other than that, for all you know. She didn't really notice. Like, I will basically put that in our group chat that we apparently have with like annotations of who she is and what happened and stuff like that. So we, if we forget, I don't know, maybe we can look back. And while you're driving out, Margo, you receive a picture of a very confused looking woman with a uh, rifle over her shoulder. Well, I assume I, he includes a what it what I mean, happened to her. You don't know the, the context of it yet, but okay, it basically informs like her name and what she is and what she got scratched and stuff like that scratched by the plant presumably you don't know until you arrive okay so cutting back to the night in galva hills for carson and jay both of you roll me just plus weird i uh, guess <laughs> my favorite hey, carson yes carson and jay. Not a seven. plus weird plus weird why am i so consistent <laughs> i don't know you are consistently Probably. trending down though oh, i would man. rather be failing because i need experience but yeah sure. <laughs> there's a failure Alrighty, Carson, go ahead and mark experience for me. Jay with a seven, and Carson with a six. After a long Carson day, wakes up with a deer looking at him, s- sitting on your bed. Oh, are you there, buddy? How are you doing? You want to die? Not really. Okay, bye. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> All right. So, the two of you, after a long day, we know Margaret's still driving. It's going to be a long night for her, unfortunately, but she'll get there. You retire to your I'm, rooms. I'm used to it. It's fine. Yeah, it's all good. I mean, you guys kind of all are at this point, really. You guys retire to your rooms. Would uh, sleep take you guys relatively quickly, or after a long day, do you guys kind of think and think and think? Ricard- Jay is definitely, like, recounting the things that were happening, but once he goes to bed, he's gone. Okay. And then, Carson, are you, are you quick to sleep, or does it take you a while? No, nah, I'm quick to sleep. I'm out, and I'm out for a long time. Alrighty. So, with that, you're going to have similar, but different dreams. We're calling the day and trying to process everything you've seen. For Jay, you're not sure when sleep fully takes you, but there's a lot to process. Your mind is kind of going over what you saw, the things hanging in the woods. Uh, before you fully go to bed, the entity within your little lock Uh, essentially requests to be left alone in the bathroom with the jawbone. Would you fulfill that request? Well, you've made weird requests before, but sure. It doesn't say anything, but you know it's pleased. With all that, you're able to hit the hay. You're not sure precisely when, though. And from, let's say from the bathroom, maybe about 10 or 20 minutes after you think, now it's time to (laughs) meet temporary death. (laughs) That long rest. You start to hear kind of a scratching, and it's fairly consistent. It's like scratch, 
scratch, scratch. And it takes you a moment to realize where it's coming from, but it sounds as if it's coming from the bathroom. It sounds like something's scratching against the mirror, actually. I'm casually like, what is it, like semi-yell? You aren't breaking anything back then, are you? As you shout out, the scratching pauses for a moment and doesn't get louder, but each instance becomes longer. To the point where it makes your hair stand up on end. I think he would stand up and like listen closer to the door, but not actually open it. As you move closer to the door and begin to listen, you hear the faintest hint of breathing. And not one instance of breathing. Two, three, four. Do you mean individual sources or consecutively? Individual sources. Well, I'm not opening that door. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to pick up Carson. Oh, they like go to his room? <laughs> yeah. Like Loki, one eye on the, the bathroom, see if it's not opening, and then like quickly smooths over and knock on his door. Hey, you awake? It doesn't open as you walk away from it. Uh, but as you're moving from the bathroom to your door to leave the room, you see something for a moment in one of the standing mirrors they have. And it causes you to stop in your tracks before you go any further. And it looks as if scratched into this mirror is, while perfect, an incredibly jagged outline of your body in the exact moment that you look into the mirror. Outlining your arms, legs, expression, everything scratched directly into the mirror. Well, that's fancy. I'm not staying here. Mm -hmm. And as you think that, you wake up. But you wake up standing in front of the standing mirror. No scratches on it. You're sweating, and it's been... Two or three hours as you look at the clock. And that's creepy. Like that definitely is creepy. I'm gonna check the bathroom and see if that part was real. Me putting the pocket watch on the jaw in there. As you go back to check the bathroom, the door opens just fine. You hear no breathing on the other side, and the pocket watch is sitting right next to the jawbone. Both right where you left them. I'm gonna ask him what that was about. If it responds at all. It doesn't. You don't feel a thrum or anything coming from it. You write yourself and double check that you are awake, and you indeed are awake right now, 100%, but it has no response. It's resting or processing something, but you, it, this isn't too weird. It's not responding, that is. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. All right, then keep your secrets. Don't make a habit out of that, then. And I'll leave it to the devices in the bathroom. Do you head back to bed, or...? Like, how long have I been sleeping at this point? Three hours, you said? About three hours, yeah. I think he would go downstairs to like quickly get something to drink or like to the bathroom i guess but just being outside of the room basically yeah fair enough and he's going to make a quick stop like listening at the door of cars and see if he's like uh, also having weird dreams potentially just listening in with that we'll go ahead and cut over to carson uh prior to that though jay uh since we roll a seven go ahead we'll mark one stress where you want to put it Honestly, at this point, I want to say corruption, if that's an option. But you don't want it there. <laughs> I definitely do not, but at the no. same time. So, uh, I, I would say corruption is specifically used when you touch things you should not be touching, and this is not an instance where that would have affected okay. you. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Yeah, it, it's bad. I'll, I'll, I'll say that much. Like, this is definitely a case of, like, a breach of comfort zone, so I would guess reckless. Like, okay. he actually fe felt in physical danger at that point. Sure. And then we'll rewind about two, three hours and cut over to Carson. You said you also reached sleep quickly. For you, though, this general sensation is different. Uh, you feel yourself beginning to nod off. You, though, hear the same scratching sound. And it sounds like it's coming from... Actually, it's really difficult. It's like echoing through the room, Carson. But it's distinct right before you nod off. This annoying just... No. Just over and over. That's going to be a no from me. Now what? Uh, what, do, what do you do? Do you just sit there in bed? Where is it coming from? You're not sure. It's, it's loud and pervasive. Since you're laying flat, it's really difficult to tell where it's coming from in the room. I'm going to turn on the lights and get up. Uh, as you get up and your ears kind of adjust to the room and you turn one of the lights on, uh, you can actually hear it's very clearly coming from the window, the outside window. The outside window? Yeah, the window that would look out to the rest of the town of Galva Hills. What level am I on? Second floor. <laughs> and you don't have a balcony like I do. Okay. Okay. Are my curtains closed? 
They seem to be closed now, yes. Oh, God. As a person, like, outside of the game, I get spooked way too easily. <laughs> um, you did turn the lights on, though, so you can see one of them ever so slightly moving. Wh okay. I can see the curtains moving. Uh-huh. There's no air on or anything, right? Curtains are shifting slightly. You check. Fan. It shouldn't be pushing it. The air. You don't really hear it. You're not even sure this All place right. has AC. I'm gonna... Oh, uh, God. I'm gonna... I guess I'm gonna go over to the... To the window and move the curtains. As you move the curtain... As, as any rational person would do, surely. Of course. I don't like this at all, but I feel like if I pretend it's not there, something worse is going to happen. That's fair. Then you turn the light on. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, I grab my baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> Do you open it with the bat of your hand? The bat. Okay. As you kind of poke out and, and lift it, you actually you, you're able to move the curtains. You realize that the curtain's going to be pushing like, like it's fl being flicked from the other side. And you notice Aww. there is a tiny, like an half an inch the window was pulled up just ever so slightly and you can see some of the branches from the tree must be scraping up against the window can't that plant like just grow out of nowhere from what you've it. seen it, de it definitely just kind of shows up and then disappears yeah some of the branches look like they've been pushing up against that curtain so that's probably what that was um you know what I think I'm gonna leave the room <laughs> As you turn to leave the room, suddenly the glass behind you, the window, just bursts. I knew something was... Oh, God. The entire branch crashes through. As you've turned away from it, you can't see, but you know that's exactly what happened. With an absurd amount of force, you feel shards of glass and wood pepper your back. I knew this is what was going to happen. I knew it. Your right arm oh. is suddenly wrapped around in this branch. And glancing down, it is not the brownish, rugged wood that you saw, but it white, tipped in red, piercing and pushing deeply into your flesh and pulling you backwards. More and more of it shoots out, grabs your leg, grabs your other leg around your throat, and it begins to puncture and pierce deep into your skin. You can feel your blood seeping down your clothes completely soaked down into the carpet. You can't even scream. It's squeezing so tightly. And as you feel your life force giving away Carson, suddenly you come to. You're standing in the middle of the room, gripping the bat tightly, uh, tight to the point where you can feel your nails have kind of cut into your palm, and your palm is bleeding ever so slightly. But the window's closed. The lights are off. And you're just standing in the middle of the room. And you hear nothing besides the fan ticking above you. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan at all. Zero percent. What time is it now? How much time has passed? It's been approximately the same amount of time, I would say, Carson. And for you, uh, you would mark two stress. Where do you want to put that? Um, I don't know if I feel cornered. I mean, you just got attacked in your own room. Yeah, I'll do cornered then. All right. And for you, it's been about the same amount of time that it has been for Jay. You actually hear him just outside your door. I would knock like with my finger if I hear heavy breathing. <laughs> to be honest, I would have. I was immediately going to leave the room and go to either Jay or Margot anyway. <laughs> or Jay, I guess, because Margot's not there. Take a bump into me. <laughs> I open the door right as you're about to knock. <laughs> and with that, you see Jay standing there. Bad dreams? Yeah, pretty weird. Want to talk about it? Yeah. Should uh, probably also wake up uh, Graham. Yep. I agree. Uh, Graham's room he isn't already awake at this point, honestly. Graham's room is near your guys's. But you don't... Like if you, if hmm? he doesn't wake up because... Well, I assume he hasn't had bad dreams, we'll leave him alone, I guess. Um, I'm gonna... You know, for some reason, I'm more worried that he's just not gonna be there. I mean, you want me to break in and open the door for you? No, maybe. Maybe. Pick this lock easily enough. I do think something weird is going on and that we should be... All right, fine. I'll start, of I'll start lock if I'm picking a lock. <laughs> you start picking it before you knock? No, yeah. no, I knock. All right, you knock. 
and listen very closely. And after a couple seconds, the two of you hear a very faint scratching sound. Oh, no. Just pick it. That's probably just him. I'll pick it. Sure. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll me your, uh, your break in. Your bust a move. Jesus. Jesus. Five plus six plus three is a 14. All right. You were able to pick I this don't thing. I have to break in. I stick it in and it immediately opens. In record time, this door is open and you see Graham laying in his bed, twitching ever so slightly. He's kind of mumbling to himself and making like whimpering sounds. But you guys hear Scratching coming from plain as day. It's coming from the window. Mm, I think we got to get him up and out. I mean, at this point, I know I'm awake, so I'm probably just going to check out the window first. Do you have your weapons on you? I mean, uh, no. Well, I, Jay's mind is basically going like, it's probably a treat or something. It's fine. Okay, okay, wait. He hasn't had the same dream but, you had. But no, no, no. We were going to talk about it. True. But we haven't yet, unless you You're want to right. say something. Oh, else. God. I mean, wait. Actually, if I see you going for the window, I'm going to be like, wait. I had a very vivid dream about being attacked by a tree at the window. And you think it's going to happen in real life as well? Look. We don't know what's going on, Jay. There's Fair. some weird stuff happening. I think we should we should get Graham and then maybe see about checking out the window. All right, fine. <laughs> he sounds so disappointed. I know. I'm a, I'm a buzzkill, but I'd also rather not die. How about I get my shotgun just in case? You know, honestly, I don't think you should leave. I don't want to be here alone. No, I, I grab Graham and go. <laughs> like, Carson's feeling like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what, what are you doing exactly? Who's, who's doing what? All right, I'm going to try getting Graham. Okay, you rush over to Graham, and you can see that he is very clearly asleep, but he is gripping his blankets tightly, sweating, and just mumbling to himself. I'm going to smack him a little bit. All right, as you give him a... Not quick, hard, but like, course, hey, like, wake up. Wake up, yeah, yeah, yeah. As you do that quickly, he's like... <laughs> and he's kind of freaking out while he's waking up. Jay, what are you doing? I mean, I've backed up from the window at this point, and I'm, I'm just watching, let's just say. After like Graham... Checking the door, seeing if uh, like, anything gonna... is coming, stuff like that. I think if, if we get Graham behind us, we can check out the window. Sure. After Graham wakes and you no longer hear him kind of mumbling and you guys pause for a moment, you realize that grainy scratching has ceased. Stop. And he's looking around like, what the? What? What? Why are you in? Why are you both in my room? Uh, were you having a weird dream just now? Be honest. Uh, uh, he, his eyes kind of go glassy for a second as if he's thinking goes and then he just nods. Yeah. Yes. Okay, describe it. Uh, oh, can I have a minute? Sure. He's he's still like breathing heavily, trying to like it. It, it, it almost looks like he's not like here. He's still he's touching himself, and he's just absentmindedly not looking at you, Carson. Touching you, he's like grabbing your arm and like squeezing it. Like, okay, that's a person. I'm a person. We're good. Okay. Cool. And by this time, you guys notice the the scratching has definitely ceased. Something right. weird well, you is going on. I'm gonna check this window. All right. Uh, looking towards the window, Jay, you're able to pull the curtains. The window is indeed closed, and just outside it, you can see that there is there are trees, you know, up around this building. You saw them from the outside, but they're not scratching up against the window. It's relatively windy. Are, are they close enough to scratch up against the window? It'd have to be pretty damn windy. So I, so you guys would probably think that to yourselves, of like, would this even reach? Why did it suddenly stop? But upon closer inspection, Jay, you see that there are very, very clear scratch marks on this window. That's not good. Some of them are deep, like a blade. Deep. Like, how far would I have to reach out of the window to grab the branch? It's relatively dark right now, so it's really hard to judge. Most of the lights on the outside are also off. Uh, but fortunately, the moon is high in the sky, and we don't really have much light pollution. So uh, you'd have to, God, looking at it and judging it, you'd have to get out there. You'd have to, like, hang out the window and grab onto it. You'd, 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 you'd need some serious wind to actually reach this window. Not entirely sure oh, how I feel about the fact that the sleeping in the woods felt less uh, dangerous, felt, felt less hunted. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was also before or yeah, before we went to the creepy part. That is true. Uh, Graham looks at y'all and says, uh, 
I assume y'all had the same what same dream same thing I'm not sure if it's the same dream but we definitely had something weird going on what did happen in your dreams I describe it yeah as you are the... Graham's like he's nodding along but not as if he had the same one he's nodding along as if he understands mm-hmm yeah, so so what did the similarities is uh, the scratching, I guess, in glass in your case. Mm-hmm. It was apparently in the mirror in mine one. And windows for me. And apparently in Graham's case, it was real. And I'll point at like the scratches in the window. So there were no scratches on the mirror? Not when he woke up, no. It was flat. No. Were there scratches on my window? You didn't did look. Did you actually end up checking? Yeah. I know I did not. Honestly, I was pretty freaked out. I mean, we I don't. Check I after. I don't have a lot of, you know, despite this cold demeanor. Uh, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. I would send Margo a message if she's already back in town yet. If she's within reach yet. Actually, I can't. Never mind. Yep. <laughs> Damn you, technology. I, I mean, you could just to emphasize panic. No, I would. I mean, I would pick up my phone to do it, and like, oh wait, she can't reach me anyway. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's fair. Put it back. After you guys kind of, uh, you describe your dream as well, Jay. I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. After both of you do, uh, Graham gives you the same nod as if to say, "Yeah," and goes, "Huh." So we all had different dreams then. Shit. I know this is gonna sound like a cop out, but the longer I'm awake, the Less I'm remembering. I'll just say what I remember now, I guess. It's I feel like it's just falling out of my head. Oh, it's pretty normal for dreams, but like yeah. yeah, like a bucket with a huge ass hole in it. I wouldn't even say holes. It's just I'm just dumping right now. Anyway, sorry. I I saw less than I felt. It was I don't know, something like drilling into my head and a scratching sound. I I don't think it was glass. It sounded like I don't know. Like teeth gnashing or something, like just you know, whenever you bite too hard, yeah, like when you bite too hard in food and like you miss, oh, it like makes like squeaking Ooh. sound like that. Oh god! Yeah, I know. And he, he and he like kind of checks his jaw. He's like, "No, I'm fine." Okay. I felt like pinned down or something, like something like wrapped me up. I guess similar to your dream, then Carson. Something grabbed onto me, but I but I like woke up into it. Like it didn't grab me after. I was already pinned down. Where did the sound come from? Really? Like in my head. Like, literally, I felt it coming from, like, within inside me. Both a scratching and, like, a drilling sound. Well, that's different enough for it to be weird. Yeah. I don't remember any visuals, though. I had them for a second. Sorry if I, like, hit you or pushed Does you or something, any... Carson. No, it's fine. Does he have any scratches on him? Now that you can see now. All right. This is getting freaky. And during this time, he, he still, he looks shell-shocked. Just completely like, what the hell? As he's like taking in the room, like one thing at a time. Well, we should still check out Carson's window. See if he actually yeah, gets right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Graham hops up out of bed. He, he's not wearing a shirt, but his like pajama pants are really bright. They're like orange and purple and like just crazy mm. colors. And he kind of jogs over to uh, your room, Carson. And as you guys check, uh, you see that they're not as deep, but there are scratches on your window as well. And the same probability of the tree reaching, also exists. Very low. Jeez. All right. I'm curious about my room. Because in my case, the scratches came out of my bathroom. Technically. Man, I I'm a broken record, because guess what, Jay? Same thing. <laughs> mm. There shouldn't even Wait. be a tree in front of me, because I yeah. have a balcony. That's well, a far reach. Were the scratches yeah. on, on Jay's window or the mirror? On the window. They're on the window? They're on the window. Well, rather than the tree actually moving, I think it was those weird tentacle things. The vines, the thorns, I agree. The vines with the thorns. The very sharp thorns, apparently. If you guys have a chance to kind of calm down and you know check your surroundings, it's about, about two in the morning. Fortunately, you rolled well on your uh, burglar check, Jay, so you guys didn't make too much noise going from room to room. You didn't really seem to disturb anyone. I think it's safe to say that we should stay away from the forest or anything natural at this point. Anything that can grow fines. Yeah. I guess we'll have to do the shift thing again, maybe. Maybe. I don't know, this is... Or just sleep somewhere far enough away from plants, I guess. Oh, 
Jeez. We should definitely not go back into the forest at night. Let's just say that. I mean, I doubt the daytime's safe either, but... We might also have to uh, see if that lady is still okay. Probably a good yeah. idea. Yeah. If, if, assuming I still remember her. Uh, you do. Okay. He, he kind of realizes that, well, I can still remember her, so she's probably fine. Knowing what you guys know, uh, do we choose to do anything? Go back to bed? I mean... There's nothing else to do at this point. I'm not yeah. going anywhere. I don't... I do... I... Probably best if we stay in the same room at least. I yeah, guess, but... I agree. Oh my god, yes. we're having a sleepover? Apparently. Oh my god, pillow fort! Hell yeah! So oh excited. Uh, Our girls uh, loud. Oh, it is It is all guys, isn't it? <laughs> it's all guys. <laughs> yes, it is, yes. <laughs> guy fort, guy fort! <laughs> guy fort! Yes! Like an alpha. Be a little fight, and we don't stop until someone breaks a bone. Exactly. <laughs> and then you take that. You, you put that broken bone in the pillow and use it as a weapon. Exactly. Perfect. Alrighty, and uh, with that, we uh, we pillow fort up. Uh, whose room specifically do we decide to stay in? Uh, Jay's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine is the furthest away from the tree. <laughs> it's the furthest away from the tree, and also, um. I mean, no, I forgot what I was going to say. Never mind. <laughs> Excellent. And also ellipses. And also it's protected by my pocket watch, apparently. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I, do, have buy... bone. I do have a creepy bone in my bathroom, though. Your luck. <laughs> the creepy bone does put a bit of a damper on the whole safety thing. Um, but it's definitely better than mine or Graham's room. All right. And the three of you are able anything... to... Uh... Aside from the creepy bone itself, the only thing scary about it is the weird writing on it. Indeed. Oh, can I can I say I took a picture of the writing and also sent that to ICS? Definitely, yes. I, I was going to say that. So you get all this figured out. You'll hit the hay. Uh, in shifts, I would assume. And during this time, no other nightmares come to you. It might be harder to actually conk out when sleep finally takes you. You're able to actually thoroughly rest. And by the time the morning rolls around, Margo, I don't know if you're uh, coffee or cocaine, those are the only two options. But you Co do... Co yeah, I mean... Just Both, yes. But okay. Why sugar when cocaine? Yeah. yeah. Oh Perfect. my god! Uh, no, it's just energy drinks galore. Same thing. That's oh god, pretty... it's coffee instead of water, you use Gatorade or something. <laughs> <laughs> Monster energy. Yes! <laughs> Cursed, okay. Um, anyway, wow. That's not great. Okay. <laughs> um, thoughts alone. No, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, completely unrelated and funny, so I guess it's a good note to end on. Uh, what's his name? Sea Dog? Whatever. Connor, the anime YouTuber dude. He decided he got all this tea, and he didn't want to drink it all because it was garbage. So he's like, oh, I'll still repurpose it. So he freaking puts it in his humidifier. <laughs> Why oh. in the seven hells? I don't know! I mean, was no. it good smelling tea at least? No, it like broke the humidifier. <laughs> oh why? my god, why would he do that? I don't know, but it was really funny. Uh, anyway, he's British, so he's like, hey, this oh, tea is absolute garbage. You know what? I mean, why I drink think that tea says everything. I, yeah, that, that, know. that's what he joked about. And he's like, well, I broke it. That was a bad idea. Anyway, I guess we're done here. So, switching back to our game, <laughs> that gave me a solid <laughs> giggle. Margo, you're on the way back. Uh, ICS will get you information when they can, of course. Uh, I'll definitely let you know. Jot down the primary things that you ask them, and I will answer them in turn. I'll, I'll throw them onto our little, uh, our general knowledge list. And I'll say by fair morning, you're all able to wake up, as Jay is an early riser. Margo, you arrive back at the town of Galva Hills. And knowing what we know, Jay and Carson, Next time we meet, you'll have some interesting information to share with Margot.